Hello, everybody. This is Purge. Bring you guys a patch update video. I only have 1.5 hours until Canada Cup. I literally just finished my put Purge Cast Pub video, and it's up. So I only have an hour and a half to make this. I'm just gonna double check my audio is working. Okay, my audio is working. I'm not gonna have to record this twice. This is gonna be my first impressions. First impression: new hero, Arc Warden. He is from Dota One. I've never played him before. He does some crazy shit. To my knowledge, you can double your items, kind of. Don't have time for this. All right, Flux infuses a lone enemy unit with swirling volatile energy, slowing its movement speed and dealing damage over time. This effect is muted if another enemy unit is near the target. So it sounds very similar to Desolate from um, Spectre. Creates a circular distortion field of a magnetic energy that grants evasion and attack speed bonuses to allied heroes and buildings within. Spark Wraith summons a spark wraith that slowly materializes and patrols a targeted area until an enemy comes within its range. Once the target has been found, the wraith fuses with them Dealing magic, magic damage. There's another skill that used to be like this, uh, Tree and Protectors. Um, he used to be able to put an owl on a tree. Very similar, like a sentry that would nuke. Tempest Double. Briefly refocusing its fractured elements into a single form, the Arc Warden is able to create a perfect electrical duplication of itself. Duplicate can use all of Arc Warden's current items and spells. When the duplicate is created, all of its available items and normal abilities are off cooldown. So this means you can double your Dagons, you can double your Midases, you can double your Refresher Orbs, I believe... Not sure about that. Um, hexes, all that stuff. So Dagons, uh, Midas is very commonly talked about. But I have no idea what this hero is going to be like. I honestly have no idea. Um, we'll learn a little bit more about this. I think this will be interesting to check out. Uh, he's an interior, right? Oh, that's the, the new Zeus. Um, Alright, I don't think he's actually here yet. Unless I'm crazy. Alright, I don't see him. Is he agility or something weird like that? It's not strength, right? No, there are a lot of strength heroes. Alright, I do not see him. I'll look into that later. Alright. Okay, that looks pretty good. Tumpest Helm of the Thunder God. Arcana item for Zeus. Forged by the... Alright, he's actually riding a storm cloud. That's pretty cool. Okay. Uh, new base model, texture, and all new animations. Special kill effect for enemies slain of Thunder God's Wrath. Special bingo effect and sound. I'm buying this. That's that's clearly happening. Buy now. I'm going to buy this later, but I'm going to buy this for sure. That's pretty cool. Um, blah, 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 blah. Oh, man, there's an... All right, I want to read this, but I'm going to read it later because we don't have time for this. I'm going to read this later. Another comic. That's super cool. All right, new in this update, Desert Terrain. That's cool, Desert Music Pack, don't care. Uh, ultra Shadow Quality, all right, interested. Uh, Coliseum, new desert map, is this new custom game mode? Oh, duh, because we already had Coliseum, this is just a different map of Coliseum, that's cool. I really like Coliseum, I think it's very fun, you can play a lot of different heroes in it. New treasure, which is whatever, um, don't know what's gonna be inside of it, can't click any of this stuff, it's gonna keep Timbersaw on. Um, new in the client. Hero stats. Oh, stats in game. I like that. Okay, that's cool. Ooh, this is this is a bit a bit interesting. Can check out my uh, hero stats in game and see how bad I am. Easy access armory. We'll fucking see. I I I'm not sold on this yet. Um. Yeah, I hope this is much better. The armory is in a really bad place right now. It's really difficult to navigate. Uh, one stop shopping. Redoing the store a little bit. Is the patch even here? Okay. Alright, I was scared that I was making a video and there was no patch change. Private chat channels, that's cool. Alright, into the into everything. The arcane rune. Ooh, what is this? Wait, hold up. Lands around the river have changed. Explore new paths of opportunity and escape on both the radiant and dire sides. Okay. A the arcane rune infuses its users' abilities with arcane energy, reducing all spell cooldowns and mana costs. We lol. Okay, so this is a feature that exists in League of Legends. Um, it's called like ability power, I believe. Um, it reduces your cooldowns and increases your damage. But this is slightly different. This is reducing your cooldowns slightly, and your mana costs. I don't know how long it lasts. But I'm interested. Ooh, new items too. But interested to see. Oh my god, there's so many new items. 
Yo, you can't just tell me there's new items but not tell me the stats, dude. This is this is messed up. Possess the strength and reach of a white. Strength, attack speed, and damage. Okay. Oh, extends the attack range of any range crews. That's cool. Boost the mana and magic resistance of its bear while also granting improved health regen. Okay, mana pool, magic resistance, and health regen. You know what? Okay, this is the shit that I've been looking for. Okay, these are heroes that are being slightly changed for their skill builds, I'm guessing. Death Prophet, Faceless Void, Ricky Lundrid, and Doom all have new abilities. Alright, so this is just a whole lot of, like, spoilers, basically. Alright, this is what we need. Added Arcane Runes. Cause all spell cooldowns to be reduced by 30% and mana costs to reduce by 50% lasts for 50 seconds. So it's a new rune. Cool. Down with this. Uh, new change. Might be a little strong with some heroes like Zeus, for example, but it doesn't increase his damage. And the cooldown reduction is decent, but not amazing. It's really just kind of like a different version of a regenerant is the main thing. The percentage cooldown is a little different. It's a cool... I like this. Cool idea. Creep bounty increases by one gold per normal upgrade cycle. So this means that creeps will be getting... More gold with time. Um, creep on increased by one gold per normal upgrade cycle. So basically, at the end of the game, creep, or as the game continues, creeps will give more and more gold. It's that straightforward. Creeps will give more and more gold. In the past, the gold values didn't change, just more creeps would spawn. So now more creeps spawn, and they give more gold. So if we're talking about like five times, I mean, it's not a lot, like seven minutes, 30 seconds, we'll say, let's assume it's a 70 minute, 73 minute game or something, or 70 minute game. That's a long time. That's like, what, 10, 10 increases, which is 10 gold per creep. It's significant, but it's not ridiculous. So for a normal game, it's only increasing each creep gold by a couple points, not huge. Siege damage against enemy, against heroes increased from 75% to 85%. Okay. Um... Do towers do siege? I can't remember. Yeah. Towers and siege units do approximately 13% more damage to heroes. So towers do so it's harder to, a little harder to dive. And the damage increases. It's not tiny. So it's a little harder to dive now. Hero base HP increased from 150 to 180. Does this mean that all heroes have 30 more HP? See how that interacts with things later. Creeps now arrive slightly closer to the top dire tower and bottom radiant tower. Closer to the top dire tower. That's the dire safe lane and the radiant safe lane. So this is slight nerf to off lane heroes. Random draft hero pool increased from 24 to 50? Oh. Uh, one second, guys. Ugh. Added random draft to ranked matchmaking. Okay, that's really cool. I like that. That's that's very cool. That's good for players like me who have a diverse hero pool and I'm not forced into picking the same heroes. I like this a lot. Random draft now uses the same picking mechanics as ranked all pick. I think this is a nice nice uh, concession to the all draft mode that everybody was talking about. Um, this is going to be really fun for... Um, for playing uh, solo queue now. I could definitely see myself playing a lot of ranked draft. Or uh, random draft and ranked. Centaur Cursor. Corsair. Now is a stacking magic resistance aura. Okay, I heard a rumor of this. I don't know if it was real. Um, this is the small Centaur, I'm guessing. 20% for units, 5% for heroes. So basically, this is a nerf um, to stacking. Um, for This is basically like a nerf to Shadowfiend. A nerf to stacking. Um, this is a pretty big nerf. If you get a lot of Centaurs, you're going to get screwed if you're playing like Sand King or Shadowfiend or many, many heroes. So it's a very small nerf to stacking. Only if it's a center creep. Uh, JK, Hellbear now has a stacking magic resistance or as well. That's the smaller of the two Hellbears, I believe. 20% for units, 5% for heroes. This will help you a lot if you're playing Chen, though. That's pretty cool. You could grab these for Chen, and it would help you push against uh, nuking heroes. So buff to Chen, nerf to stacking. Dragonized Aura's stackable armor increase from 2 to 3. Ancient Dragon armor reduced by 1, so... Um, another nerf to stacking. And Ancient Neutrals now behave like normal Neutrals and split experience with all heroes in the AoE. Did they not do that before? I did not realize that. Add new ability to Ancient Black Dragon Fireball. Ooh, targets an area and hurls Fire Blast toward it, and gonna the 300 AoE for 10 seconds. So does damage over time, deals 85 damage per second. That's really good. Cooldown of 10, mana cost of 100, cast range is huge at 1,000. 
So this is pretty cool. Might have a reason to grab the Ancient Black Dragon now. If you're playing Chen. Oh my god, there's so many changes. Ancient Thunderhide's Frenzy is now unit targetable. Ancient Thunderhide's Frenzy is now unit targetable. Um... Okay, so you can put that on an ally. I believe he increases attack speed by 75%. Mana or regen by 1. That's a good buff, but still kind of an inefficient. The purge cooldown is reduced from 5 to 3. Okay. Unholy aura regen increased by 2. That's fine. The shockwave distance is increased massively. It's a decent buff. The speed is reduced, though, and the damage is increased. This is a pretty big satyr buff here. Pretty big satyr buff. Big range, sl slightly slower. His regen's up. Big Seder Tormentor buff, basically. Dark Troll Summoners and Hill Troll's attack range reduced. I like that because it's going to make it slightly easier to stack. Because those creep camps are hard to stack. Um, if it has a higher attack range, then it's more likely that they'll stop an attack rather than continue to run. And the attack damage is increased by 6. So they attack, they do more damage. Again, it's piercing. Um, so an uh, attack damage increase is pretty decent if you're using it against heroes. Against creeps as well, very good. Roshan's base armor increased by one. His base attack time has been slowed, but he now has more attack speed. Okay, he's less affected by negative attack speed. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, technically a nerf to Huskar here. So, cool. I like that. Added a patrol command. Um, good. People bitched about that. Uh, you're now able to bring up the targeting cursor when silenced. And instead get the arrow upon targeting rather than clicking the button. I like that. That's a cool little change. Single target with AoE effects now have a targeting UI. Like Frost Nova, Stormbolt. Good. That needed to change. That's basically been in the game since the start of Dota 2 and it's a stupid mistake. Frost Nova used to target a single hero and it would do an AoE. But now it's an AoE that you have to click on a hero. So it's difficult to click on heroes sometimes. Rest in peace, Borstun, for example. Uh, ranked all pick. Initial pre-picking time reduced from 15 to 5. I think that's balanced. It needed to happen. There was too long. Nobody used that time anyways. Towers no longer have a very minor experience bounty. Uh, that's fine. Simplified some minor damage and armor type. Let's see what this means. Move the light attack type and move the following units to the standard attack type. Effectively 40 to 50% of your structures. Centaur Conqueror. Hellbear. Hellbear Smasher. Wildwing Ripper. Seder Tormentor. Ancient Granite Golem. Basically a lot of neutral creeps. And the Warlock's Golem. So they do less damage to buildings. Or sorry, they do more damage to buildings now. Move the light attack type and move the following units to standard attack type. Um, that's weird. I thought a lot of these were like either normal or hero damage. Remove the weak armor type. They, see, they changed a lot of the names. I don't think weak. It used to be like unarmored or armored. I don't remember all the names. Move to the following. The soft armor type, same as creeps. Beastmaster's Hawk. All right, this shit's confusing me. I'm not going to spend too much time on this. All right, train. Add a neutral hard camp for each team near the respective... Secret shops. Okay. I like that because uh, the camps are a little bit too focused on each jungle. I would like a little bit more space. So there's one now near the secret shops. I like that. I added a small ramp from the Radiant Secret Shop to the ward spot right above it. Small ramp from the Radiant Secret Shop to the ward spot right above it. Okay, so that means you can go up on that hill now, I'm guessing. Move, move the Radiant Hard Camp closer to the Dire Offlane. Radiant Hard Camp closer to the Dire Offlane. Okay, so the off it's uh, basically balancing Radiant and Dire. Swap medium hard camps and radiant jungle. Add a new pathway from radiant mid to radiant jungle. Okay. Added a ramp connecting the radiant jungle to the area near Roshan. So I'm guessing that's a ramp down from the area to the right of the medium camp. So you could maybe, a little interesting, could save some time for supports. Create a walkable pathway to the radiant rune ward. Does that mean you can go on all hills now walking? Created a new juke spot. I kind of like that because uh, cliff, cliff, cliffs, cliffing people is a little bit OP, for example. Created a new juke spot behind the Dire Secret Shop. Expanded terrain around the top tier, tier 2 Radiant Tower. Move the bottom rune up a little bit. Most of these I think I'm going to check out in the actual game later. I'd have to download tests to do that, and it would take a while, so I'm just going to go over the patch notes. Alright, this is basically the map is very extremely changed. Okay, that is pretty freaking clear. Map is going to, it has a pretty big overhaul. So it's basically trying to make the Radiant side as balanced as the Dire side. And it's slightly off balance right now. Let's talk about heroes. Grievous Greed, Bounty Rune. All right, really nice adjustment here. I really like this. It makes uh, the first Bounty Rune less, ab ab like, ridiculous. If you have more Grievous Greed runes, then that's fine. Basically, the most overpowered aspect of this was always the first rune. The first rune is always the most overpowered. 
Grievous Greed granting full gold during buyback gold penalty phase. That's very balanced. So actually, oh, just overall nerfs to Alchemist. I'm happy with that. Bane movement speed reduced by 5. Very small nerf to the hero. Um, I'm okay with this because I think Bane is strong, but might become unpopular or unpowerful due to the meta shifting with this new patch. So I think this is okay. I don't think Bane was ridiculous. Base each HP regen massively buff for Batrider, so you can offlane a little bit better. Flamebreaker mana cost reduced to be scaling. Nice adjustments to Batrider. Beastmaster Wild Axes no longer has unit targeting. Um, weird. And Call, Call of the Wild cooldown rescaled. Uh, Call of the Wild, his boar summon. So this is weird. This is technically a nerf. Because you can't just target heroes now, so they can they can juke you. Uh, but he also does receive a a pretty moderate buff to the late game spawning boars and hawks. So I would call this an overall buff to Beastmaster, definitely. This is a very, very small nerf. Most of the time you axe somebody that's stunned, for example. Um, did I make this big enough? I actually didn't. I'm sorry. Let me make this a little bit bigger. And then I'll move my camera to the right. I should have checked this earlier. I was just too excited, guys. Can you blame me? Okay. Bloodseeker, Bloodrite cooldown rescaled to be much, much lower at... Well, very small buff to Bloodseeker. He's still not playable, I think. Bounty Hunter, Janata movement, attack speed reduction to be different. Um, very. This is actually a buff to Bounty Hunter. I'm actually quite surprised about this. This is a buff in all ways. A very small buff. But I guess Bounty Hunter is an occasional pick hero, not an always pick hero, so I think that's fine. Drunken Haze cooldown reduced. Um, that is your second spell. Very low cooldown at level 4. Um, pretty decent buff. Primal Splits dispel magic damage to summons increase from 200 to 500. This is actually pretty big. They keep buffing the dispel magic. I like that. And the cooldown is reduced from 6 to 4. There's probably some heroes this is very good against. Like Enigma, for example. You could kill all those Eidolons. Um, you could use it against Forge Spirits. Windwalk cooldown reduced from 7 to 5. So keep buffing the Wind Panda. I like that. Um, very, very abstract Brewmaster buffs, but they could be very useful. Added Scepter to Bristleback. Nasal Goo is no longer targeted and said applies Goo to all enemies around you in 600 AoE when casted. That is so strong. Um, I feel like this is actually usable. It doesn't increase your damage very much, but it kind of allows you to play like more of a utility Bristleback and still be useful. And the item actually does give you a lot of HP and stats, so I feel like it's actually a decent Ags. The mana cost gets reduced by 5 overall, and the Quill Spray max damage increased from 400 to 450, so... I think this is pretty good. Remember that if you level Goo up all the way, it slows for 32% on the first cast. So you could just 32% everybody and then apply an extra 12, I think, on top of that of slow. Um, while also reducing armor by, I think, 2.4, if I remember correctly, but I don't remember the exact numbers. So this is something that could be picked up. Um, it's going to be some really gross memes about this one, that's for sure. Uh, Broodmother spawns Vitalings damage reduced. So that's your nuke, very, very slightly, very small nerf to brood. I think that's balanced. Center War Runner, return damage increased. Again, 75% of your strength go toward, goes towards re reduced damage. That's actually getting to be pretty good, because for every point of strength that you get now, you're getting 0.75 damage. You're, you're basically getting an extra damage return to your opponents every time they attack you. So if you just build like a lot of strength, you not only is it increasing your right-click damage by one, but it's also giving you value back when they attack you back. It's starting to become a potentially viable option in the late game. It doesn't matter early game at all, but in the late game, this is maybe something you could build around. But I don't know if we will. It, you could argue that it's maybe a counter to heroes like Wind Ranger, for example. Build a lot of strength items, let her hit you, and then you reflect a ridiculous amount of damage. Chaos Knight Reality Rift bonus damage increased to be ridiculously high at level 4. Wow! I think this in some way is justifying uh, maxing out Reality Rift second on Chaos Knight because the damage is 180. I didn't even realize it was 120 before, but 180 is ridiculous. You could stun with one skill point in the stun and then a Reality Rift for 180 physical damage. And if you get a crit, you're going to crit for like, with the minus armor on it, you're going to crit for like 250 damage at least. It'd be That's amazing. Really good, uh, really big buff to Chaos Knight. But to be honest, I don't think it's... It's going to be annoying to play against if you're playing against a support cast knight, I think. But against a core cast knight, he still is going to have limitations for farming. But it's going to give him a lot more advantage and the ability to contribute to a lane as a carry. Which I think is something that he he could be he could get some value in. Because currently there aren't a lot of heroes that do that, like Gyro, for example. It's basically like Gyro and not many other heroes that are good like that. Chen base strength increased by 3. That's a difference of 57 HP. Pretty big. Keep in mind that all heroes' HP were increased by, I think, 30 so that's another thing that's uh, interesting. I wonder why they did that. 
I don't know. I'm not sure. Not sure yet. Uh, maybe it was... No, I'm not sure. I, maybe it was the damage change for the neutral creeps, but probably not. Uh, Penitence, mana cost reduced from 170. That's a really big buff, and the duration increased by 3 seconds at all levels. Now, Penitence is the one that amps damage and slows their opponents. Um, it's been buffed. It's a pretty darn good 1 skill point now. I think it increases damage by like 15% and slow by 15%. Somewhere around there, 12 to 15 for 8 seconds is not terrible to have, especially at 70 mana, but it does decrease the, or increase the amount of time it takes to send allies back, which is a little bad. Clink's agility growth increased by 0.3, so every 10 levels he gets an extra 3 damage. Um, and he also gets into like an extra armor. This is a very small increase, um, not really that worth talking about, I don't think. Clockwork is going to get a strength gain increase of 0.2, so every 10 levels he gets an extra 2 strength, which is 38 HP. Very small in increase. Um, obviously he gets damage every time he gets a strength point. And Power Cogs now spawn in a circle rather than a rectangle. I kind of like this change. We'll see. Um, I'll have to see how many units get caught in it, but potentially. The important thing is that when your battery is salting, it targets heroes in a circle, right? But the problem is that Power Cogs spawn, spawn a rectangle, which basically means that even if you only catch one hero in there with you, the, the battery salt can still hit enemies outside of the power cogs, which is kind of stupid, right? Because the range is barely outside of that. So sometimes, even if you get right on top of your opponent, you still can't kill them. So this could be a potentially massive buff to clockwork in the laning stage, because as soon as you hit 6, you could definitely solo kill somebody. If this rectangular radius is the same as your battery assault, this could be a huge buff to clockwork. And clock's already situational, so this might be a big buff to him. Crystal Maiden, Nova cooldown reduced by 1, and Arcane level 4 mana regen increased from 2.5 and 5 to 3 to 6. So a, a further buff to getting 4 levels of Arcane Aura. Um, I don't think this is going to make Crystal Maiden competitively viable, but it's a nice adjustment, I guess. But it's not, I don't think it's big enough of a change to see CM become super OP. Small incremental changes like these are mostly existing, in my opinion, because CM is not played, and... She's got a great skill set, she's situationally useful, you just need to give her some little pushes here and there until finally people are like, until she basically comes into the meta and becomes strong because of her skill set, and then they're like, okay, she's been getting buffed. So when, it, when a hero's out of the meta but they have a good skill set, I think you just push them slightly every time, say like, okay, here you go, here you go, here you go, and that makes them slightly better. Alright, with the same aspect, this is another hero that's in the meta and is a little bit too strong, so you give him a little pushback. Uh, you reduce their base int, int by 2, I think that's a really good change because uh, Dark Seer's mana pool when he goes to lane is way too high. He has like 300 mana, so he can cast Iron Shells like 4 times or something. And you can now purge off Iron Shell. So, common ways to do this, Tornado, Yule Scepter, uh, Diffusal Blade, um, Fortune's End from... Um, Oracle is good. In fact, Oracle now hard counters Dark Seer really hard. We'll see if he's put into Captain's mode later. Um, Dazzle, Poison Touch, mana cost reduced from 100 to 70. Really big buff. That's actually a massive buff to Poison Touch. That's actually so good now. You can actually zone heroes very, very well with Poison Touch now. Um, I actually... I will see, I'll read the rest of this and I'll talk about Poison Touch. Shallow Grave, cast point increase, so it takes longer to cast very slightly. And the mana cost increased to 150 at all levels, which I think is a... A very slight nerf, and Weave no longer provides 800 flying vision. It now provides ground vision for the A Weave the ability for three seconds. Okay, so that means you can't. This is confusing to me. It provides ground vision but not flying vision. Does that mean it sees the areas around the trees but it doesn't see above the trees? I'm not exactly sure what this means. It's very confusing. Uh, we'll have to see what it means. I feel like these nerfs to Dazzle are not extreme as. Like, Dazzle is one of the most picked supports right now, and I feel like these nerfs are not enough to make the hero unplayable, which is... I mean, I like Dazzle. I can really, I, I think he's a good hero. Um, he's a little overpowered right now. Um, I'm sure the bigger needs that maybe need to come are to Huskar, maybe more than Dazzle. Um, this is already decently significant, because you do actually spend a lot of mana as Dazzle, so that you might actually run out more often at level 4. Um, this is almost nothing. Um, this is a big buff. Because, but Dazzles mostly don't get Poison Touch, so, and if they do, they only get one skill point. But this is already going to be, like, I think Dazzle Mate is actually really overpowered now. Because it's 70 mana, if you get level 4, it's a 7 second cooldown, and it does about 300 physical, and it stuns for 1 second. If you go mid-Dazzle, and you max out Poison Touch, I mean, it's awful, because you don't scale well, right? But, if you go in a 1v1 lane, and Dazzle maxes out Poison Touch, you can actually do seven. You can do 300 physical damage every 7 seconds, Pretty much infinitely, because every bottle charge you can cast Poison Touch once. 
It's really good. Poison Touch is becoming really overpowered. But the problem is that your other skills are always better to skill. I've played games where I'm like, yeah, I'll just max Poison Touch and be more aggressive. It's not good. It's just really not good. I like maxing it late game sometimes if I have enough items to stay survivable, but it's cool to see this ability get buffed. I like it, but it's not good. It's not a good ability. I like it, but it's not a good ability. It's that straightforward. But this will help Dazzle a lot in zoning. You're going to see him do a lot more like going mid and zoning a mid-hero kind of a thing. Because it does 140 physical at one skill point. It's pretty good. For damage. It's not good at killing people, but it's good at killing their tango count, basically. Death Prophet. Temporarily removed from Captain's Mode. Okay. That's right. She got a new skill. Replace Witchcraft with a new ability. That's her third skill that gives her attack speed, or makes her run faster and makes her nuke have lower cooldown and stuff like that. Spirit Siphon. Creates a spirit link between you and the target. Is this the same ability that Wraith King used to have? Draining 20 plus a percentage of max HP per second and slowing movement speed up to 18%. The spirit link breaks at 300 distance and it lasts 4 seconds. And how long does it stay up? Spirit link breaks at 300 distance and it lasts 4 seconds. Has 1, 2, 3, 4 charges. Man, what is this? Is Okay, so first of all, 3.4% of your max HP times 4 is about 12, 13 ish. It's about 13% of max HP. So if you cast this 4 times, you're reducing their max HP by about half. But it's a stupidly big replenish at 45 seconds. But the point of this is that it slows people that are near you, and it increases your max HP because Death Prophet wants to be tanky, obviously. So that's kind of cool, and it slows them. So this makes up for her, before she had lots of damage and she chases people, but they can get away from her, usually, because you can't slow them. So sometimes you buy Yules or Atos or something like that. But this allows her to slow people, pretty much permanently, by the way, because, by the way, four seconds, you can you, you can do it four times for four seconds. That means you can slow one person for 18% for up to 12 seconds. Uh, four, eight... 12, 16 seconds. 16 seconds at 18%. 18% is not a big slow, but it's enough that it basically allows her to chase down one person and kill them with her ultimate, whereas otherwise she would have had to have um, her passive. So I like this change because it basically makes Death Prophet... I haven't read the other uh, changes yet. Um, maybe I should go over them really quick. Base movement speed is buffed by 30. This is a massive difference, but it had to happen because Untouchable or um, Witchcraft used to increase her movement speed. The cooldown is going to be reducing naturally, which is a Pretty big buff. It makes witch crypts crypts are much better at level seven because you don't need any more witchcraft levels. And silence cooldown is also going to scale down, but silence used to go down to like a really low cooldown. Like I think it was less than twelve. I think it was like nine seconds or something. Exorcism spirit count is pretty fair. I think this is a, a decent amount of spirits without witchcraft. And one ghost per point one seconds to point three seconds. So the ghost spawns slower now, much slower. That means that her ability to burst in within like three seconds is, or two seconds is lower, but her ability to chase, do damage based on this is better. Now, I don't know, does this just mean that you only sap that damage for four seconds? It's just like a, it's a straight, it's a straight nuke, basically. It doesn't like increase your max HP, it just heals you, right? So I think this is just a heal, basically. If you cast it on somebody, can you cast... Okay, so basically, that's how the skill works. Let's say you're taking damage, and you're, you, you're going to die. You pop your ulti, then you cast the Spirit Link on one guy, and then for 4 seconds you're, you steal like 13% of his HP plus 20 per second, and then that heals you. Okay, so you lower their movement speed, you steal their HP and it heals you, and they get slowed. And you can cast this on 4 people at the same time. So you want to cast this on high HP targets that are attacking you. So basically like melee heroes. This is basically an anti-melee hero ability that are tanky because it heals you for a percentage of their max HP and slows them and buys you time to get your little exorcism out. So I think this is a really good change. It could make Death Prophet overpowered, but it changes her in a way that is going to be very nice because it gives her more survivability options, which is things she was lacking before. It doesn't. Um, it makes her more interesting to play and more higher skill capped because you're not just basically pressing your ulti Casting Crypt Swarm maybe 4 seconds, and silencing occasionally. It's a lot more complicated to play the hero. It has a higher skill cap. I like the change. Um, she's going to have way more mana problems, though, because this is 55 mana, and you want to you can cast up to 4 times. So the her mana costs are going to be a lot higher. 
um, especially because you're not reducing the mana cost of Crypt Swarm now with your Witchcraft. That's the one thing that I didn't see change. So she's going to need more mana regen. Bloodstone may be the item build again um, versus Octarine Core. I think Bloodstone is probably going to be the item build now. Lots of HP regen. Um, you'll probably still make Octarine afterwards. Uh, I don't think you necessarily need to go Yules now because now you have a slow. You might still want Yules. We'll see. I'm interested. I like the changes. Might make the hero overpowered. I may regret this moment later on. We'll see. Doom temporarily moved from Captain's mode. That's actually kind of nice. They changed him so he's just out of Captain's mode. We won't see him for a while. Uh, replace level death, which I think is fine because that ability is a little bit weird and not very cool. Passive auto cast attack ability. Mini stuns for 0.3 seconds and applies a 4 second burn. It deals 40 plus max HP as magic damage. Interesting that they keep adding all these max percentage HP abilities. Um, mini stuns for 0.3 seconds. Very, very small so it can stop TPs, which is important. And applies a 4 second burn. So at maximum, it does 20% max HP plus 40 damage per second, plus uh, whatever that is, um, 160. So it does 160 damage plus 20% of their max HP. It's not a four second cooldown. Whoa. This feels really good. What the heck is this? Four second cooldown on 40 mana cost. Oh, it's on your blades. So you have to hit them. Okay. It's a, it's a, it, it apply, applies on your attacks. It's, you don't just cast it from range. If you cast it from range, it's the most overpowered ability ever. Because so you just follow somebody and you keep casting them, casting on them until they die. Um, but this is, this makes a little bit more sense. So it gives you mini stun every time you hit. I'm sorry, every four seconds. So you get a mini stun every four seconds, but it does 20% of their max HP. Pretty interesting change. Um, obviously your nuke damage is not quite the same because you're going to have to hit people now. But it is going to encourage Doom to play more carry builds. Uh, base attack time increased, so you actually attack slower now. So a bit of a nerf there. Um, and Scorth Earth damage heal is restructured to be a little bit less. This is like 5 damage times 16. It's like 60 less damage. It's okay. Scorched Earth movement speed reduced as well, and Doom cooldown increased by 25 seconds. I like that. I think this is an overall, these are overall good nerfs. They're a little heavy handed, but this Infernal Blade edition is, looks really good. So I kind of, I kind of like these changes. I think these are pretty cool. Dragonite HP regen increased to be, oh my god, 12 at level 4. So basically you just max Dragon Blood now and you just don't die in lane. Um, Elder Dragon form frost AoE increased. So that's the AoE is the splash. Okay, so the slow AoE is the same as the splash now. Um, I guess this isn't really overpowered. Um... But it's really strong. Um, I kind of... I, I Dragonite was picked sometimes already by teams like VP and uh, VG Gaming, for example. So we'll see if this pushes them into OP territory. I don't think it will, but it's very good. This is a huge amount of HP regen. Very big. A scepter to drought. Wow. Okay, now causes her attacks to splinter on the target and splinter to two arrows affecting two random units in a 375 radius. Splinter arrows do 50% damage each. Primary target still takes full damage. Interesting. Um, and it also carries all attack modifiers, which means that things like Scotty, Sanjay Nyasha, um, Orb of Venom, Diffusal Blade could all be very good. Uh, we'll see what's most overpowered with this. Um, let me think. Dota2.com slash items. Oh god, there's all these new items on here. I don't know what they do yet. Um, I'm just going to take a look at these things and try to figure out. Uh, Mjolnir. Does that mean you can spawn Mjolnir on up to three units? If so, that seems a little... Maybe it's only attack modifiers, not procs. So it would do Scotty, um, Lifesteal. You could Lifesteal on three units instead of just two. You're basically increasing your damage by 100%, by the way. But it's just hitting... It's basically like giving yourself... It's making you turning yourself into a bit of a Medusa. You could apply Deso, uh, Diffusal Blade, Lifesteal. Um, maybe there's some other stuff I'm missing, but I'm not seeing a lot else for, for orbs and things like that. So, interesting change. Um, in terms of it being a good item on Draw Ranger, increases her HP by a, quite a bit, which is okay. Increases her H... I already said strength. That's the same thing. HP by quite a bit, by 390. Uh, increases her damage by 10, and her attack speed by 10. That's pretty bad, and her int, which she doesn't need. So, it's kind of bad. I don't think this is good. It's just too expensive for what it does, unless you really want to be a Medusa for some reason. You know you know what this probably justifies? If you're playing against a PL, I would buy this, maybe. Because then it allows you to do AoE and a damage in an AoE. But it's I don't know if it's good. We'll see. Earth Spirit enabled Earth Spirit in Captain's mode. Ugh. 
everybody cry down terror. Uh, it had to happen eventually. The hero's been in the game for like two years or something. Maybe still OP, but they did nerf him as well, it looks like. Intelligence growth nerf, so he gets less mana per level. And Boulder Smash stun AoE reduce. I really like this nerf. Um, it basically makes it harder to land a Boulder Smash. That's his stun. It's harder to land it because the AoE isn't quite as wide. And I think the AoE was too wide. And Geomagnetic Grip can now only pull the allied heroes when using Scepter. What a beautiful nerf. Oh, this is great. I actually think Earth Spirit is pretty balanced now. Um, that's great. Before, you could basically, if anyone was stunned, you just pull them, to your, pull them to your allies. And it was way too good to save allies. Um, but I think nerfing it to only using a scepter, I think that's a great nerf to the ability. It basically means that if you're ahead in Earth Spirit, you can have that solution. Um, this is a good nerf. This is a good nerf. This is an okay nerf. And I, I, you know, I'm completely happy with this. Earth Spirit's win rate was a little too high, but I think this is a great, a great solution in making Earth Spirit bounce. Elder Titan, Earth Spirit damage rescaled to scale with levels now. Does less at level 1, but it does more as you level it up. 50% is ridiculous, by the way. And the mana cost is also rescaled to be better at level 1. So this is a decent buff to the hero. Um, I like this change. And this physical damage component is no longer reduced by damage block. Very, very small thing. Doesn't matter very much, but... Because um, obviously damage block only blocks up to max like 80 or something, but... This is more of a bug fix than it is a buff. Um, very, very small. Actually, it's not very small. I'd say this is this is significant. This is very significant. Um, Elder Titan's late game team fight is potentially amazing. Fifty percent of their total HP is a ridiculous amount of damage when you're reducing when you're when you're preventing the resistance. So, this is scary. Um, these other two things are small. Fire remnants no longer give vision. I think this is a nice nerf, nice nerf to Ember. Ember is strong, but he is not always strong. Um, I think this is balanced, so you can't just put in a Roche Pits, for example, and you can't see if people are waiting for you on top of your Ember Spirits or your Fire Spirits. He didn't really need a massive nerf. Enchantress. Enchant cooldown reduced to be much lower at level 4. This is a 50% slow and it lasts for 5.5 seconds. So it's very good late game at kiting some melee heroes. Sometimes when I'm playing late game Enchantress, I will max it out for that reason. So this is just a further uh, buff setup. Enigma, idle on movement speed is increased. That's cool. It actually increases quite a bit by level 4 now. I like this. Amalfus damage increased. Um, That's good because before it did very low damage. 70 times 3 is 210. Now it does 90 times 3, which is 270. And black hole cooldown is reduced by 20 seconds at level three. I like that as well. Very small nerf or very small buffs to the hero. This is like quality of life. Um, this is gives you a little bit more single target damage. I think these are nice buffs to Enigma. I don't think he needed a lot, but a little bit helps. Uh, the big, the most significant buff here, I think, is probably the Malefus damage and the black hole cooldown. I like these changes. They're they're not too heavy handed. All right, void is changed. Temporarily removed from captain's mode. Replace Backtrack with a new ability. I like that. Backtracks are just a little obnoxious and anti-fun. Time Dilation applies a debuff to all nearby enemies in a 650 AoE for 69 seconds. Causes time to be frozen on all enemy abilities, causing their cooldowns to make no progress while they have this debuff. Slows movement and enemy attack speed by 4, 6, 8, 10 for each locked ability. So interesting. 50 mana cost, 16 cooldown. Very cool. Um, Heroes this is good against, for example. Let's see. Um, Skyrath Mage, Arcane Bolt. You basically, this is basically very strong. You know, it's honestly very good against a lot of abilities, but it's this ability is very strong against heroes who have low cooldown abilities. So it's very good against Bristleback, Skyrath Mage, um, I would say Ancient Apparition, uh, Visage, Shadow Demon, Darkseer, there's a lot of heroes. Uh, really good against Batrider, prevents Sticky Napalm from being cast for 6 seconds, that's pretty cool. Um, and it's still a movement and attack speed for that. Um, it's very good against like Leshrac. I, you know, this is a lot of heroes. Any hero that's going to cast twice in a team fight, very good against. This is very good against supports, especially, that want to reduce the cooldown of their abilities so they can cast them multiple times in a team fight. Heroes, it's bad against heroes with passives, basically. It's uh, very good against um, Anti Mage, actually. So Anti-Mage has a 5 second blink, you can stop that for up to 9 seconds. Um, that's really cool. I really like this this feature. It has a lot of interesting thought that you can put in the game on it. Good against uh, Ursa, um, good against Bounty Hunter, there's so many heroes that it's pretty good against Tidehunter, there's so many really cool addition. Time Walk no longer slows units, that's your original skill, and now undoes okay, it undoes any damage taken in the last 2 seconds, that's like a Basically like time-lapse now, that sounds really overpowered. 
The cooldown is rescaled massively. Six seconds. Okay, everybody maxes this ability now, I think. Mana cost is reduced from 90 to 40, and the range is reduced massively to 550. Okay. And the cast, po cast point reduced massively too. Um, really interesting change. I think it's... All right, so this basically gives Void way more strength in the early game, basically, in my opinion. Um, it also gives you counters to t face this Void. The counters are poison damage and damage over time that do slow damage over time. If you do burst damage and you don't have stuns, then it's kind of bad. But the other issue is that this cooldown is so low and the mana cost is so low that he can just continuously run. But 550 is not that far. You're going to see where he's going, basically. We'll see how this works, but I feel like this might be weird. I really like the time dilation, but I'm not sure if I like this. Time walk no longer slows units. That's fine. This is interesting. Two seconds is not much, though. So keep in mind that, for example, if you're going on a void, if you Laguna Blade him and then you stun him with your stun, he won't take. He won't be able to time walk the Laguna Blade damage now because it's two, over two seconds ago. So if you hit him with a lot of damage and then you stun him afterwards, then it's fine. But in the laning stage, for example, Faceless Void is going to get a lot of advantage now. I feel like this might. This is definitely going to give Faceless Void a lot of what he lacked. He lacked lane control. He wasn't able to like stay in his lane a long time. He can't win very many 1v1s. It takes like a lot of items to make Faceless Void strong, basically. And when he gets them, he was kind of overpowered because he would just Chronosphere and kill everybody. But now he doesn't backtrack. But he has a lot of tactical things that he can do in fights, which I think is good because before the hero was way too one-dimensional. Your options were... Hit somebody and hope for a bash or run away or chronosphere. And if you didn't have chronosphere, you're basically hope to bash somebody. You're very item reliant. And now you have skills that allow you to make choices that allow you to outplay your opponents. So it's a good way to take the hero, but I'm scared that it's going to be OP. But I think it's playable. You can play around it, I think. Gyrocopter's first missile damage reduced uh, by a little bit at the first level. I think this is good. It made his uh, level 1 rotations a little too good. But I don't think he needed that heavy of a nerf. So I think the call on nerf alone is, is good. Huskar, prepare to get nerfed. Berserker's blood bonuses are provided linearly from full until 10% HP, rather than stepwise at 7% increments. What does that mean? They're provided linearly from full until 10% HP, rather than stepwise. I... Mm, Linearly instead of stepwise. I don't know what stepwise means. The maximum magic resistance reduction reduced from 84% to 50. So basically it's it's reducing Huskar's ability to survive magic damage. But I still don't understand this aspect. You'll have to go check out other people that make posts and talk about this to really refill what this means. I'm sorry, I don't understand the first impressions of this. Again, uh, I didn't make this clear because I started the video very rapidly because I wanted to get it done before I cast Canada Cup. But... Um, this is a first impressions video. I'm not here to like completely analyze the patch. I'm just giving you guys what I know. I'm going to make mistakes while I make this video. So disclaimer halfway through the video. Invoker now starts. Am I still recording? I am, I think. All right, we're good. For some reason, I'm recording the 60 FPS. What a freaking mistake. God, that's a huge mistake. Because um, now it's going to take like way longer to process. Maybe. Invoker now starts with Invoker level 1 at the beginning of the game. Okay. Decent buff to Invoker. And he now has the standard 6, 11, 16 leveling. So you can get... This is basically, in a way, Invoker has an extra level now. An extra skill point. Okay, and now he can get an attribute bonus at level 25. Because he's now missing an ability level. So, um, pretty cool buff to Invoker. It helps out his laning stage a lot. You can do a lot more builds now. Um, you can justify going 1, 1, 1 on your Quas Wex Exhort in a lot of ways. A lot of people have been doing that with Wex and Exhort lately due to the fact that they want to have Alacrity to last hit better. So I think this is a nice change to Invoker. Um, you can get a second point in Invoke now. You can get the level 4 a little bit earlier. Pretty cool. Jakiro base damage increased by 7. Okay, so this means that Ice Frog wants Jakiro to be a core now rather than just a support. I feel like this is a little overpowered though because Jakiro's base damage is already very high in my opinion. Well, it wasn't like super high, but it was pretty good. I'm just going to check out the uh, Jakiro base damage on my other monitor here. Um, okay, that's not right. It says 18 to 26, but obviously that's just his, his hero base before they add int. It did uh, 18 plus 28, which puts him up to 45. This means you could play Jakiro mid, though. Um, I think he's already great as a support, though. This will also help him zone heroes. I don't... I, this is a, I feel like this is too big of a buff, personally. 7 is a lot, and I think Jakiro's okay right now. This is kind of weird. 
Keep of the Light, Chakra Magic, cooldown reduction increased from 2345 to 3456. Um, this, again, this is the cooldown reduction. You cast it on an ally. If they cast a spell, it's reduced by 6 cooldown. So this could be really overpowered for some heroes. Um, this would be kind of cool with Luna, for example. You could do like a Lucent Beam and then do another Lucent Beam. Something like that would be really cool, actually, because you could hypothetically max Chakra Magic now on Keeper of the Light and get some really cool... What about... You could Splinter Blast twice within one second. Cast Splinter Blast, Chakra, Mag or Chakra Magic, a um, a Winter Wyvern, cast Splinter Blast, and then immediately cast Splinter Blast again. You could clear an entire creep wave, do like 680 magic damage. Same thing with an AoE. This, ability, this is getting to be a little crazy. Um, I think that's where you should find the abuses on heroes that have unnaturally low cooldowns on their nukes. Chakra Magic buff duration increase from 12 to 15 seconds. That's a nice buff too. And it now restores and increases mana capacity by up to 300. I assume this is temporary and for 15 seconds. Um, if so, that's a kind of a cool buff. There's probably some heroes where that's really powerful, like uh, Leshrac, for example, a hero that needs more mana pool. You can cast it on Storm, for example. Kind of cool. Added Scepter to Kunkka. How much patch do we have? We have a lot of patch to go. I have about uh, 40 minutes right now, by the way. Um, Ghost Ship now drags enemies with a 200 AoE of it towards the crash site. Site. Within 200 towards the crash site. Okay. It now starts from where you are rather than behind you. Lands in the same position it normally would have. So that means it's easier to land. Enemies are still able to perform actions while being pulled by the ghost ship. Works similar to Dryman just Gust not back. So that means it's not a stun. It just moves them, which is kind of weird. Uh, but it basically makes it easier to land ghost ship on people. This may push him to OP. We'll, we'll see how what is other stuff. Tornado gives your team vision over target immediately upon cast rather than just when triggering. It's also now, Tidebringer is an auto-cast ability, will only trigger if turned on or cast directly. I, this is a nice buff. It allows you to basically play Kunkka in the safe lane. Whereas before, you couldn't do that because you'd always push the lane with Tidebringer. But now you can skill it up and choose when to use it. That's a nice change. Play him safe lane. Um, also, you can play him as support in some ways, if you want to. Tidebringer damage bonus increase to be higher. The AoE rescaled uh, to be a little bit more straightforward. And Ghost Ship mana cost has been buffed. I feel like this could make Kunkka OP, but we'll see. This is the the one that looks a little scary to me. We'll see how it works. Legion Commander, Moment of Courage cooldown reduced. This is your passive, so a very slight buff there. Scepter now makes you and your target immune to all damage unless the source is between the dual persistence. Ooh, now that is a really good Ags upgrade. That is actually a stupidly good Ags upgrade now. Basically, if you can... You just have to be stronger than the person you duel now, and you guaranteed kill them. Because remember, the, the eggs already guarantees that you duel them until one of you dies, right? But now if you're immune, the only way to make it work is to... And an effect from the outside is to buff up the person that's attacking... Excuse me, attacking the Legion. So if, uh, like, a CM is attacking Legion, the only way to help it is to buff the CM so that she can somehow kill the Legion before the Legion kills the CM. So this is actually a situational item now because before it didn't really matter because you very rarely duel more than five seconds but now you could hypothetically get an item on a legion and say like you know what they have a bkb on their carry now all you have to do is you just have to duel them and if, as long as you do more damage than them you will win the fight you will kill that shadow fiend he's gonna die unless he gets sent back to base maybe or something or relocated back to base is maybe I feel like if, if you go too far away from the duel, I believe it breaks the duel. So maybe there's some solutions like swap, maybe. Um, but I'm not sure how many there are. But I, even that, I don't know if that works. So I played Legion the other day, and uh, they were pudge hooking the guy I was dueling, and he would still continue dueling me. So I'm not sure what the distance is. It might be really far, but we'll see how this works. This makes a Legion more situationally picked and gives him another a niche solution against some heroes. You could use him against like um, maybe Ember Spirit or something like that. Just guarantee that you get the kill. Uh, Lifestealer, Rage Attack Speed bonus increased at lower levels, 50 at level 1. That's a pretty big buff. Feast Damage and Lifesteal increased as well, very, very slightly. And Infest cooldown reduced at late game. Um, I think this is pretty good. Yeah, Lifestealer is still going to be bad, I think. I don't think this can make a big enough difference. Probably not. Lion, Earth Spike, Mana Cost reduced. You got a buff, okay. Um, late game, very, very slightly. Earth Spike Duration increased very, very slightly. And just not to be a weird number, I guess. And mana drain cooldown reduced very slightly. Yeah, that's fine. Not going to make that big of a difference. Lone Druid temporarily removed from Captain's mode. Dang it, I really like him. Reduce, replace synergy with a new ability for Lone Druid Savage Roar. Um, 
Synergy is his third skill, by the way, his passive. So let's see how this changes. Um, okay, so basically what they did is they changed... What Synergy did before is it would affect all your other abilities. It's similar to removing Witchcraft from Death Prophet. Now the bear has more damage as you level him up. His movement speed goes up as you level him up. Rapid duration increases just by leveling the skill up. And the movement speed bonus, the rapid movement speed increase got buffed. And true form health bonus increases based on your levels. So basically they completely removed Synergy. They put it, they packaged it into the base skills as they already exist, more or less. And they gave him a new ability, which let's see what it does. Causes enemies in a 325 AoE around you or your bear to run away with 20% movement speed bonus for 2.4 seconds towards their fountain. Cooldown is down to 16 seconds. So in a way, this is basically a 2.4 second stun. I don't know if this goes through magic immunity. Probably not. The mana cost is 50. And an entangled hero will not be able to move still. Spirit Bear also has this ability but the cooldown is shared with your hero. Okay, so you can basically activate the ability no matter who you're selecting. But the important thing is that it's a stun. It's a 2.4 second stun. Entangle lasts for three seconds, by the way. So what this basically means is, if you entangle somebody, but you don't want them to attack your bear, you can also cast Savage Roar to basically make them turn away from you and try to run away, but they're obviously stopped. So, um, cool ability. It's potentially very strong. It's really good. It makes your bear... And your hero very strong in the early, basically at all stages of the game. Um, it's so good. It basically protects your main hero by a lot. And your hero's already really hard to kill. I feel like this is going to be abusive, honestly. Um, we'll see. Uh, I'll definitely try him out in a, in a pub game and uh, test it out for you guys and let you know how I feel about it. But this feels really good. Because now, basically in the early game, I'm going to level up Spear Pair. I'm going to get one point in Rabbit. And I'm going to get Savage Roar. 100%, that's how I will do it. I'll probably go 411, most likely. Um, the cooldown on Rabbit, I believe, is uh, 30 seconds, 20 seconds, something like that. 20 seconds, I believe, maybe 30 seconds. So I'm going to get pretty decent uptime with just one point in Rabbit. I'm going to have some mana problems because of Savage Roar and Rabbit, but uh, getting ganked in the early game and saving my bears can be a lot easier. I don't know, we'll see how that turns out. I'm glad they removed him from Captain's mode, though, because that could be potentially too OP. Luna, turn rate increased, so you can turn faster. Eclipse, Scepter, Beam, Interval, Reduced. Um, this is kind of cool, but I don't think it's going to change Luna to be viable in terms of Ags. Because the biggest issue is the cooldown is just too long. It's like 150 seconds or something. I know that it's strong, but I don't know, man. 0.3 seconds is really fast, though. You can beam twice as rapidly. It's kind of cool, but I, I don't know. Maybe it is going to be overpowered. I, I just feel like the cooldown is too long, though. Lycan Wolves and Shapeshift no longer grant Critical Strike. Instead, they gain Cripple at level 2, granting a 20% chance to cripple the target, causing it to take 8 damage per second for 4 seconds and lose 40 attack speed. So they don't crit anymore, but they reduce the attack speed of their person they're hitting, and they give them some damage. So it does apply crit, but it also reduces their attack speed. So it allows you to 1v1 with Lycan a little bit easier. And Shapeshift now grants all units under your control, a 40% chance for a critical strike. Okay, so it's basically just a buff, but only when shapeshifted. A 40% chance for a up to 1.8 times critical strike, which is pretty high. So I don't know what it was before. I think it was maybe a 20 or 30% chance to double hit, to hit for two times. Um, a nice change, an interesting change though. It allows him to counter some heroes. Lycan was a little too straightforward with what he could do, but this actually allows you to counter some heroes in certain ways now. Magnus added Scepter to Magnus. Changes in power to be an allied hero aura instead of having to cast it. Affects ranged heroes for half values and causes them to deal splash damage around the target in a 200 AoE. And this is his Scepter, by the way. And it can still be cast on units, but does not stack. So you can still cast on units if you want to, or you can stand near heroes, and it makes them do cleave. So ranged cleave. By the way, that has never happened. Well, I guess it has happened with like Dragonite, but like range cleave is potentially abusive. Um, but keep in mind, it affects range heroes for half values, so they do half the damage, and it does a very small cleave. Two hundred AOE is pretty small, but it does affect range heroes. I don't know. We'll see how this. It's kind of a cool choice. It helps you scale better as Magnus. Turns you into more of a carry. All right, I have like thirty minutes. I'm gonna just quickly. My God. All right, we gotta go faster, Magnus. 
All right, skewer distance increased, uh, buff to level one. The slow is nerfed at level one. The slow duration increased at late game. Very small buffs. Mystic Snake no longer increases mana steal per jump. It's now up to 20% of total mana. So basically it's better in a 1v1 lane. This is gonna buff Medusa in 1v1s. It's a pretty nice buff to her. 20% uh, of total mana is ridiculous. If it does damage based on the mana steal, this could be extremely overpowered. Uh, but it also gives her the ability to basically regen her mana by a, an obscene amount. Because if you hit somebody that has 1,000 mana, and you steal 20%, that's total mana, by the way, not current. So if you steal 200 of their mana, and then you hit like two other heroes and steal like 600 mana, that is like an obscene amount of survivability. But it does make Mystic Snake more relevant late game. I like that. Double dang damage no longer affects all meeple units. Okay. Mirana attack range increased slightly. Starstorm radius increased very slightly. Secret now instantly kills the first unit it hits. If it's a non-ancient creep. I actually like that. It should probably one-shot creeps. Um, if it's a non-ancient creep. And it also helps out uh, Romine Marana. So we'll get some farm out of arrows. Now. Um, it's actually kind of OP for jungling though. Because you can kill the small creep. And then you just arrow the big creep. You can basically. I wonder if you. You could actually just jungle with Marana now. I'm not even kidding. Costs 100 mana. You one-shot a creep. You're basically like a CM now. This is a huge buff to Romine Marana. Huge, huge buff to Roaming Marana. Because you're you're a Crystal Maiden now. It's that simple. You just arrow creep and it dies. And you get... You kill a neutral creep. You can instantly hit level 2 on Marana now. That is, that's a huge buff. Roaming Marana is now a thing. And it's also going to allow you to translate into jungling and farming. Um, I might actually play Marana now. This looks really fun. It's a good way to catch up now that you can just jungle. I like this change a lot. It's a very cool change. Um, it does increase your overall farming speed. But the cooldown on arrow is pretty high, I think. So I, I'm gonna, I would look it up, but I don't have time. Only have like 40 minutes. Adaptive Strike base damage increased to 100. The mana cost is reduced. This is disconcerting. Um, morph rate increased to be better at level 4. And the hybrid, hybrid that's your um, Ag's ulti, goes down to 120 and now shifts in intervals of 1 rather than 2. So Adaptive Strike is better now. A little interesting. 100 at all levels makes it better as a 1 skill point ability. That's kind of cool, I guess. Um, but I guess the mana cost going down doesn't matter that much, and I guess this is pretty inconsequential. Naga Siren, I just was scared that they buffed the Adaptive Strike Obnoxiousness. It's pretty much the same, just lower mana cost and uh, slightly more damage. Base Intelligence increased on Naga, very, very slightly, very small buff. Nature's Profit Base Int increased by 4, and Treant Damage increased by 4. Okay, Grant Treant Damage does more, and Base Int, that's 4 damage and slightly more mana. Very small buff. Base armor increased by one, a uh, very small buff, but significant. Void slow at night reduced, uh, okay, scale. So basically this is a nerf to support Night Stalker because the slow was four seconds instead of 2.5. I think that was a little bit too strong. Under level Night Stalkers are very very little punished. So nerf to um, Night Stalker in the early game, basically, before level seven, which I think is fair. Next Assassin Impaled duration increased. Um, pretty decent numbers, but more just fixing around rounding things. Better, it's a buff at level 1, basically. Spike Carapace, cooldown reduced very slightly. Ogre Magi, even more regen, 3.5 now. It's fine. Uh, Oracle is enabling captains. What the hell? Yes, get to play Oracle more now. Fate's Edict, cooldown rescaled. That is your second skill, the one that prevents you from attacking and gives you magic resistance. So it's worse with one skill point, but better with three and four skill points. Fate's Edict, duration reduced. Uh, to 4.5 seconds at level 4, which is, I think, a good benefit, because usually you want to cast it to prevent magic damage, but not keep it on the whole time. The cast range rescaled to be worse. With, it's basically much worse at one skill point now. Fortune's End mana cost reduced by 20, and now you can target allies. I like this. Uh, you can basically purge an effect. So there's a lot of things that you can remove from an ally now, such as Dust, or Slows, or Shadow Dagger, and things like that. Uh, Fortune's End, keep in mind, goes down to 6 second cooldown if you max it out. So maxing it out early might be an option if you want to use it to debuff your allies a lot. And it no longer continuously dispels after the initial cast. That's your ultimate, by the way. Uh, oh, looks like they changed it. This is your ultimate. False Promise no longer continuously dispels after the initial cast. It used to just like, it basically was kind of like a BKB. But you could still uh, any, um, interrupt TPs and stuff. The duration is increased by one second at all levels, and the cooldown rescaled to be worse at early, but still really good late game. 30 seconds at 16. I don't know if this is a good way to balance the hero, though, because the hero doesn't passively farm very well. So it's hard to hit 16 in the first place. You have to hit 16 by teamfighting well. 
So I think Oracle's still going to be a shit hero, to be completely honest, unfortunately. The mana cost reduced by 100. That was actually really needed because it was too expensive. Uh, that's maybe the biggest buff that was here, other than False Promise cast on allies. Um, but now you can basically Edict on an ally to prevent the magic damage and then remove it instantly, which is a nice a nice change. The hero has a higher skill cap. I think he's still going to be bad because he's hard. it's hard for him to get farmed. The only way he gets farmed is by team fighting. If you get behind, Oracle is an awful hero. He is an awful hero if you're behind. Doesn't have a stun. Yeah, he's got some magic burst, but if they have BKBs, he's really bad. I think Oracle's still not very good, but this is a move in the right direction. Our World of Our worked out Astral Imprisonment works. It now deals damage to enemies in an area around the target when it ends. The target itself will also take damage if it's an enemy. It deals 75 to 300 magic damage and affects a 400 area. No longer steals intelligence, but it can be cast on creeps. Okay. The cooldown is rescaled to be 20 at level 1. The cast range rescaled to be 600 at level 4. The Astral Spirit Imprisonment duration increased from to 4 at all levels. And the Essence Aura AoE reduced from 100 to the standard 900 aura radius. Arcane Orb now steals intelligence per hit for 40 seconds. Here was only interesting. Uh, and you need more than one skill point for that to do that. That's kind of cool. 3 int is uh, going to increase your damage by a lot. Increases your right click by 3. Increases your mana pool, which means your orb does more. Uh, the Outworld Devourer intelligence growth reduced from 3.3 to 2.7. Okay. So he would have had a little bit too much mana otherwise. Um, I think this is a cool change. Um, this is an AoE, by the way. If you astral a creep in four sec after four seconds, it will do an AoE. So this basically allows you to farm faster. You now have a farming ability that doesn't require you to sit in lane and not die. Um, you also have a banish with one skill point at low mana cost. It doesn't you don't have to cast it for int, so you can very easily banish to last hit. OD is going to be really obnoxious in mid lane again. Pretty much is what this means. Um, obviously the damage is not very high, but I think your skill build now is going to be four one four. Probably, eh, probably not. They'll probably still max out the magic damage. Maybe something like... It'll probably still be 144 four, and then max out Astral. But they might go for... Yeah, it's not really that worth leveling this up early. It's not worth prioritizing it. They'll probably still go 144, most likely. But I think you could definitely justify going like... Maybe... 112 or 122. Something like that. Because the early orb is... I might be wrong on this, though. Maybe it'll go 114. You'll probably go 114, I think, is the build now, most likely. Eh, 141. Yeah, 141 with the bottle, I think. 141 with the bottle. So you can nuke enemy heroes. Cooldown's pretty long, 11. That's not terrible. Alright, PA base intelligence increased. Uh, bigger int growth as well, so she's a little bit smarter. Phoenix Sunray turn rate increased slightly. Supernova damage per second is increased at late game. Uh, Sun, uh, Phoenix is still not that good. Uh, Illusion or Orb mana cost increased, or reduced, sorry. Big buff to Puck. He's going to have a lot more mana in the early game. Um, his Orb is way less mana. The cooldown is... It's a nerf to cooldown at level 1, though, but that's fine because most people max his skill out first. Winnie Rift cooldown is reduced, better late game. And Winnie Rift no longer silences heroes. What? Oh, no longer. Only sound. It now silences creeps. Okay, that was confusing. It's like, why would you nerf that? Pudge Rook Scepter on Pudge. Reduces cooldown. God, there's no way I'm going to make this in time. I am actually so worried. I need actually need to sign out on my Skype. Sorry, guys, and because it's been um, having internet issues. All right, uh, reduces cooldown of Meat Hook to four seconds and increases the damage from 360 to 475, and it no longer grants previous scepter bonuses. So before it would make your ult heal you and do extra damage, but now it just makes your Meat Hook cooldown super low. Instead of 11 seconds, it's four, which is amazing, and the damage goes up. This is pure damage, by the way. So this is a really big buff. Uh, dismember damage is going to be okay. Now it always does a percentage of strength. That's a pretty big buff. And it now heals you for the damage it does always? Wow. Or is this just with... See, this is confusing. I don't know if this is all Scepter changes. I feel like this is... This is the only thing that Scepter changes right now. It says no longer grants previous Scepter bonuses. So I think this is the Scepter change, and this is just on Pudge now. So Pudge's ultimate now does more damage based on how much strength you have, even without an X, which is potentially very good. If you have, like, 100 strength, you're getting an extra 50 damage no matter what, which I guess is about... I, I guess it just allows you to scale a little bit better as Pudge. And Dismember now heals you, and it always heals. So that's a big difference, actually, because now if you're rotting and dismembering, then you're always getting health back. For some reason, I can't sign into my Skype. Uh, maybe I should message Mott on Twitter or on uh, Steam. Sorry, guys. Uh, this is pretty important. 
Matt was, Matt was online one second ago. I don't know what's going on. Decrepify no longer slows allies. That's a pretty big buff. You can use it to stop damage on allies. Um, except they still take more magic. Scream of Pain damage reduced to be slightly worse at level 1. So a very, very small nerf to Queen of Pain. Basically pre-3 nerf to Queen of Pain. And Sonic Wave travel speed reduced, so it's a little bit slower now. Ricky temporarily removed from Captain's mode. Does he have an eggs? Does he have an eggs? No eggs. Okay. Meme is done. Thank God. Reworked permanent invisibility to include backstab. Uh, okay. Okay, so they got rid of the health regen, but it now has backstab. So basically, you're probably going to max permanent invis instantly now. But you have no regen. Interesting. And, uh, by the way, the backstab is not as good as it used to be. It used to go up to like 1.5, I believe. So it's a little bit worse. But Blink Strike is back to a basic ability without charges, which I think is good. It kind of needed to be like that. The ultimate change was a little bit weird. And he's got a new ultimate. Okay. So 20, 40, 60, 80 damage for the Blink. That's how it used to work. Four second cooldown, how it used to work. I think that's balanced. Added a new ultimate for Ricky, Tricks of the Trade. Ricky phased out of the world for up to 3, 4, 5 seconds, attacking every enemy from behind in a 450 AoE around him. He attacks once when phasing out, and then once per second while phasing, while being phased out. 90, 80, 70. This basically makes Ricky a teamfight hero. The mana cost is very low because Ricky doesn't have very much mana pool. He has a really bad end game. So, interesting change. Um, he's not going to be able to play it offlane anymore because he doesn't have as much regen. Um, probably not, at least. Uh, he's still a smoke cloud, obviously. His strength growth is reduced. He already has a really bad strength growth, so that's kind of a big nerf. Um, agility growth reduced, so a lot less agility. And base armor is reduced by one. Smoke screen no longer slows turn rates. So, they kind of just went a completely different way with him, which I think is fine, because the, the way he was before is a little bit too basic. But this is potentially very abusive. Now, the agility growth reducing is good because it reduces his damage, which in turn makes um, you know permanent invis worse. Like, his, his overall right-clicking people in their back is way worse than it was before. It used to be better. It's worse now because his agility gain is worse, his HP gain is worse, but he now has a teamfight ultimate, where he's basically invincible for 3 seconds, 3 to 5 seconds, and he's hitting people. Kind of similar to Slark Ulti, and he hits them right away, and he attacks three, four, and five more times. So that's potentially very, very good. And he hits him, he hits him from the behind. But you can just walk away from the area. That's another thing, I think. It's not like Slight of Fist. It won't just hit him permanently. So it'll make a small AoE. 450 is pretty big, but not massive. So you can get out of the AoE during that time if you didn't want to not take the damage. So what he'll, he'll do is cast Smoke Cloud, or he'll Blink Strike, Smoke Cloud, Ulti is what he'll do to start team fights, And then he'll BKB and then fight, for example. So... See how that works out. I think it's a nice adjustment. It makes Ricky less snowbally, which is good, because Ricky's a little bit too strong in pubs, and it makes him more viable at high levels. I like this change. Rubik Fade Bolt attack damage reduced. Uh, oh, this is the attack damage, the, the reduction in damage you get if Fade Bolt's casted on you. So this is a buff to Rubik. Very small. Rework Scepter on Sand King. Doubles Burrow Strike cast range and applies Caustic Finale Poison to heroes. No longer, that is a really nice change. Base strength increased by three. And Caustic Finale Slow. The Caustic Finale Slow is important because, and this is important because before you'd have to attack every person once, and it was kind of anti synergistic to the hero. The hero wants to like Burrow Strike, Ulti, and then Sandstorm, right? You don't want to attack everybody with Caustic Finale because now Caustic Finale explodes after like three seconds, which is cool. Um, I like this change. It basically applies an extra 120 damage or something on heroes, and if they die, it does like 270. So with this, it, it potentially. Only to heroes, by the way, it doesn't hit creeps, that would be too overpowered. But if you're killing heroes and you're epicenter, you're doing more damage now. The only downside is that your cooldown is still really long. The previous eggs would reduce the cooldown of your ultimate, and this one no longer does that. But I think this is a valuable eggs to get now. Whereas before, Veil was arguably a lot better. Burrow Strike cast range, doubling that is massive. It's like a range of like a thousand now. That's amazing. Really, really. That's like a second blink dagger, basically. Really, really cool buff. I think getting eggs on Sanking is. Very likely going to be core, to be honest. Shadow Demon buffs, yes. Disruption Illusions durations last for a lot longer, up to 12 seconds. So that's that's pretty good. It allows you to solo kill carries better. I'm not even lying. You can solo kill carries. Disrupt, disruption, soul catcher them so they take 50% bonus damage, and then as soon as they pop out, you ult them. And if they don't have a blink or a force staff, and they can't get out, then they just die. because they're Especially agility carries, because they'll just kill themselves. Or at, least, or at least my illusions will kill them. So this is a pretty big buff to Aghanim's Shadow Demon. It's a good uh, anti-carry buff. Scepter to Shadow Fiend. Requiem Souls waves now return back to Shadow Fiend, dealing 40% damage on the way back. All of the damage the Requiem does to heroes on its way back 
heals you. Okay, so it's only the way back that heals you. So it very slightly increases the damage that his ult does. Um, I don't think any Shadow Fiend will buy this, but it's an option if you want it. Um, and this is kind of cool, because I guess you usually get focus, so if you BKB an ultimate, it'll come back and it'll heal you for some more. I actually kind of hate Requiem of Souls. I think the AoE is a little bit too big. I was hoping they would reduce that, because it catches a lot of people on the extremities. Base armor is reduced by 1, and Shadow Ray's mana cost increased by quite a bit, up to 90. So this is a, a necessary nerf. The hero was a little bit too good at jungle. Keep in mind, he was already nerfed heavily above, because if you stack camps, they get magic resistance auras. So keep that in mind. Shadow Shaman Shackles total damage increased to 360, this is your third skill, and Master Serpent Wards require two hits to destroy, that's a pretty big, okay, it's two hits instead of a certain amount of HP, um, this is a buff late game to Serpent Wards, and a, yeah, it's about the same early game, more or less, I, I like this, makes him better late game, Silencer, replace Curse of the Sound with a new ability, Arcane Curse, targets an area causing enemies to take damage over time, Anytime they cast a spell, the duration of the debuff is increased. If an enemy... Oh, I should message Mott, by the way. Any chance you can get someone else for game one? I am trying to make a patch video. And I don't think I'll be done in time. If not, I can pause and resume later. But I'd like to finish if possible. Okay. Uh, targets an area cause the enemies to take damage over time. Anytime they cast a spell. Okay. Anytime they cast a spell, the duration of the debuff is increased. If an enemy affected by the debuff is silenced, the debuff will pause. No damage and no time elapses. Okay. Duration is 7 seconds. The stacking duration is 4. Anytime a spell casts, that's added to the duration. And it does up to 35 DPS, and the cooldown is 12, mana cost is 135, and it affects creep. So it's an AoE spell, allows you to farm in an AoE. Spellcast means the same stuff as COTS, Curse of Silent Rules War, stuff that procs magic st stick and isn't an item. Um, oh, prop. Um, Glaives of Wisdom is no longer you take a unique attack, so you can get Lifesteal, Desolator, stuff like that. Uh, Lifesteal would be pretty good to get on Silencer, I think. Eh, yeah. I I guess it's okay with Scotty is maybe one thing, but I, I don't know if we'll see Silencer as a Jester item build. So, put an... Mod is saying yes. Yeah. He said, yeah, we got someone for this game. Okay, hell yes. Okay, so I, you basically cast on an area similar to the way that was before. Last seven seconds, but if they cast a spell, it increases the duration. But if they get silenced during that, it pauses, because you don't want the debuff to go on them then, because you want to increase the duration, right? So... Is there a solution to this? Like, this just seems overpowered to me. Because it basically does... You're basically guaranteeing that it does 35 damage for 7 seconds. That's a lot of damage. 35 times 7? Like, that is abusive. Does... Oh, it's not that bad, actually. Sorry, it's 245. Okay, so it's actually a weak nuke. That, let me just double check that I did that right. 35 times 7. 245 damage. It's actually a weak nuke. Okay. That makes a balance. The cooldown's really high at level 1 as well. Um, at level 1, let's see what the damage is. 14 times 7. It's over 100, I think. Or about 100. 98 damage. So it's a decent nuke. You can farm with it, but it doesn't increase the damage on creeps. It just gives you a farming potential. And you basically cast it in a team fight. And if they cast spells, then they take extra damage. So it's uh, it's okay. Because every time it gets uh, resupplied, you're doing an extra 150 damage or something. 140 damage. It's pretty good. Um... Basically prevents them from, you don't want them, they don't want to cast a spell. Kind of a cool change. I think this is a better way. It's a little bit less easy mode. Gives you a reason to get the skill, I think. Sometimes people have to cast spells, right? And if they do, they take an extra 150. So now, if you cast Last Word and Arcane Curse, and they cast a spell, not only do they take an extra 150 damage, but they also get silenced and slowed. 
But obviously the damage comes later after the silence ends. So it's a bit weird. In some ways you can... It'd be better if, if they cast both on you to cast a spell so that the damage gets offset until the silence ends and then TP home. Because then silence doesn't do damage. So in some ways it's weird. But we'll see how that works out. Scythe Mage can custom shop mana cost reduced by a little bit. This is a nice buff. It'll allow him to alter his skill build because slightly sometimes you don't have enough mana to cast all your spells if you like max out your silence first, for example. Slaughter Amp Damage now only reveals the target rather than the area around it. Very necessary buff to Slar. Um, it was a little bit too good to continuously cast Amp Damages. Um, it's got the same nerf treatment as Bounty Hunter now. Storm Spirit Electric Vortex Mana Cost reduced to 85 at all levels. A nice buff to, S, uh, to Storm because he honestly is lacking mana in a lot of cases now. Um, you can maybe justify getting more points early on. Because um, the scaling, it keeps the same mana cost, and you're only increasing the stun duration. Sven base damage increased by four. God strength, scepter, aura board bonus damage increased at all levels. Uh, probably still won't see scepters on him, but this is a nice buff. You can maybe solo Sven mid. Templar assassin refaction is now always visible. This is a cool change. I like this. Um, it's interesting that they didn't nerf ancienting because uh, TA's ancienting is still pretty good. Slightly worse now due to the uh, dragon armor going up slightly. Um, Somebody corrected me this on Twitter. Like, technically, even though the cleave does pure damage, it's still based on the armor of the first person you hit. So, um, if their armor increases, it still does make them longer to kill. But I, I still feel like it kills too fast, personally. It's basically like you have a Battle Fury just by having a skill point in your passive. But with Refraction always visible, it allows your opponents to play around you a little bit more. They know when to initiate on you, and they don't have to feel that out as much. So I think this is a cool nerf. Um, it basically makes Tia a little bit more straightforward. Terrorblade enabled in Captain's mode. Um, Terrorblade right now is actually very strong, apparently. Um, he's on my docket. I need to play him. I'm sorry, I haven't yet. I'll get to it soon. Added Scepter to Tide Oh, I can't wait to read this. Causes Gush to become a ground-targeted wave ability that travels for eight. Okay, that is not going to increase eggs or Ravage. So you target the ground, and it travels for 1,800 range, and the AoE is 240, and the projectile speed is really fast. This is really, really fast. So it basically allows you to apply AoE minus armor, which is good because Anchor smashes minus armor. The cast time is reduced slightly, and Ravage stun duration rescaled to be round numbers, basically. It's a very small, essentially no buff, just uh, buff at level 2, basically. That's about it. Uh, not even. It's like 0 0.08 seconds more stun. Basically just fixing numbers. Um, but this is a decent buff, because the cast time is actually quite high. And this is a cool change that you can add. I actually like this change because Tide Hunter doesn't... There's a lot of items you can buy in Tide, but this gives you more options to alter it if you want. This also lets you AoE farm, by the way, because now you can gush creeps, uh, an AoE of creeps, in addition to anchor smashing them. Um, and it also gives you more options against heroes. Like if you're worried about dealing with PL illusions, for example, you can actually gush the ground and lower all of their armor by 5. I don't necessarily think it's good, but 1800 range is so big, it's potentially very good. We'll see. I don't think a lot of Tides will build this, but I'll definitely try it on a pub game. Timbersaw Whirling Death debuff duration increased from 7 to 11. That's the one that reduces your primary stats. Whirling Death mana cost decreased from 70 to 100 to 70 at all levels. This is a pretty big buff to Timber. And reactive armor duration rescaled. So, all around pretty solid buffs to Timber. This is a big anti carry mechanic, pretty, pretty big anti strength mechanic. Um, this is potentially overpowered. Um, I'm surprised this mana cost went down. I thought Timber Cell's in an okay place. Teams have been playing him. I feel like this might push him into getting played a lot more. But these aren't big enough changes where Timber Cell will become OP, I don't think. Laser cast time goes down. Laser cast range increase. Very small tinker buffs, not much. Kyrie exterior now triggers on attacks. Lanny, rather than on start, thank God! Because now basically as you initiate... The important thing about this is that if you blink into tiny range and you and you auto attack tiny, you would sometimes instantly get stunned, which is bullshit. What should happen is that if you if you finish an attack on him, that's when you get stunned. So if the attack hits tiny, I don't know if it'll still hit him or not, but if it either hits him or he gets stunned afterwards, after you hit him, then I think that's fine. But to just passively turn your hero and an auto attack to tiny and instantly get stunned is bullshit, because sometimes you're turning to cast a spell on him and your hero auto attacks and rather than casting the spell like you would have done before your attack finished you get stunned and that was bullshit um i thought tiny nerfs would have been more extreme because he has a really good win rate but i think this is a decent nerf i don't it's a good, it's an okay start maybe he didn't need to get nerfed hard because of the fact that um he might not actually be too overpowered after all um as the patch changes we'll see treant protector least seed mana cost reduced to be really low at level one so a pretty big buff to treant level one 
in level two, overgrowth AOE increased massively, and scepter overgrowth damage and division AOE increased as well. Um, Trina will be able to zone a bit better now. I think this mana cost did need to get decreased again. I think that's that's fair. Troll Warlord fervor reduced to be less at all levels, but the stacks go up, which means at levels. So before you would get four stacks of this at 70, 140 attack speed, but now you get up to 180. 140 to 180, so increase attack speed late game. But you have to ramp up a little bit more. But not by that much. These first couple levels are not terrible. Ranged Whirling Axe's cooldown reduced. Um, this is okay. Helps Trollord do better what he still already did well, which is kill one person. Tusk Movement Speed reduced from 305 to 310. Oh, I can't wait to read all these. His Ice Shard's damage is heavily nerfed. Uh, 40 HP, 40 damage is actually a lot. And Snow long, Snowball can no longer pull units out of Black Hole or Chronosphere. And the gather radius units. You know, this isn't that big of a nerf to Tusk, but I really felt like they were going to reduce the Ice Shard's catch range. I feel like this is this is a conservative nerf. It's not one that's ridiculous, but I really thought it would be more than this, personally. But I guess I'm okay with Tusk just getting moderately nerfed. Like, this is a, this is a pretty big nerf right here, honestly. Pretty big nerf. Because um, when Tusk gets behind and his burst damage isn't very good, he's actually a bad hero, in my opinion. And in late game, he's not that amazing always either, so. I don't know, maybe this is okay. Tombstone zombie damage reduced from 35 to 33. I didn't realize they did 35 damage, that's amazing. Bounty increased on the tombstone. Uh, some more gold if it dies, and it no longer grants experience, so. Um, this is an okay nerf to Undying. It helps in the laning stage a lot. It's basically like getting a kill, kind of, if you kill the tomb now. It's kind of a lot of gold. Scepter added to Ursa allows you to cast your ultimate while disabled and reduces cooldown pretty massively. This is a pretty big buff to Ursa. The problem is Ags is not a very good item on him. Barely increases his damage. Enrage is no longer purgeable. I was a little sad about that because I, I thought it was fun to purge off his Enrage. That's his, uh, his ultimate. You used to be able to remove it with a like Diffusal Blade, for example, but it was a little too good to remove, I think. Uh, I like that you can cast it while you're disabled. I think that's a nice change to it because it allows you to basically save it until you need to. Um, you could use it to reduce damage, but you'd have to cast it before they cast on you. That's a little hard to predict sometimes. So now you can like actually predict the burst, and you can use it to remove a lot of really big ultimates. But that's only if you get a scepter. So it's probably still not going to be built because I feel like it's not necessarily the item that Ursa needs. BKB is a lot more straightforward than doing this shit, but I guess the lower cooldown is kind of nice. 18 seconds is pretty low, but I don't think that's the solution. Added Scepter bonus to Venge, cause you to spawn a Vengeance Illusion when you die. The Vengeance Illusion does 50, deals 50% of your damage, takes 150%, and is able to use all of your abilities, but not items. The Vengeance Illusion lasts until she revives. Oh, okay, it's when you die, sorry. It's not twice, like two up. It lasts until she revives. Really? Really? That is a gimme item. You buy that all the time as support now. That is so good. Um, I guess I can die, um, because it takes 150% damage, but it basically, you could essentially keep this alive, you could basically always be playing Dota. Now, it does, I hope that your your abilities also do 50% damage, that would be balanced in my opinion, that's what it should be. Um, it should still do 50% damage, your, your magic missile should do half the damage, that's clear in my opinion, because otherwise it's still too good, but the fact that you take... 150% damage, that means that you take 50% more. Um, you take moderately more damage, but not an insane amount. But this is very good. Um, I like this. Uh, this is a really cool change. I think this is entirely viable. If anything, this might make Venge overpowered. But support Venge is very rarely get that much farm, but they may prioritize more going for position Venge now. Because this is a cool change. I don't think we'll see Venge carries buying it, but it's not terrible. Venge carries could actually buy this, though, because it's kind of like having an Aegis. I think Venge carries would buy this, because it's similar to Aegis. I think this might be too strong. That's my prediction right now. Um, as a support, I would build this now. The Nether Swap cooldown and the other bonuses in Nether Swap were good, but the cooldown reduction and the range, I think, increased. But you could swap creeps, I believe. Those were okay, but not amazing. But now, for 4,000 gold, you can respawn after you die and continuously stun your opponents on like a 8-second cooldown. That's really good. Not to mention, that's this is this is really good. This is probably the biggest buff that I feel like I've seen. This is the best eggs I've seen in a while, I feel. I feel this is just really good. I feel like it's justified worth farming for that, because it gives you a mini Aegis, and that's just valuable no matter how you look at it. Even if your illusion dies a second time. 
But even with this extra damage you take, you have more HP, so it's like, what's the big deal, you know? Venomous Scale cooldown is scaled better at level 4. Visage Stone Form AoE increase. This is a buff to the Visage Bird dropdown. Warlock Base Strength increased by 4. Shadow Word Duration increased from 11 to 12 seconds, so that's another tick of magic damage. It's becoming a very, very good heal ability. Uh, base Strength increased by 4 is going to... I think Warlock has like 492 at level 1, not to mention the overall hero increase in HP, so this is an increase of... 76 HP. That's pretty big. Pretty big increase for Warlock. He's even better at trading now. You could... Uh, might be even better in 1v1s, but very good at zoning offlaners now, I'd say, especially because of this. It does 15 damage. Um, at level 1, so 15 times 12 means that your Shadow Word now does 180 magic damage with one skill point. That is so good, and it's like 95 mana. Warlock is like actually becoming quite good. I'm actually going to pick Warlock now as a support. I played him a little bit a couple weeks ago, and I was like, you know, he actually feels okay as a support. But 180 magic damage, that is so good. With one skill point, 180 magic damage or 180 heal. That is so good. Warlock is like becoming a viable trialing hero, honestly. That's not bad. Weaver base damage increased by three. The Swarm Beetle's base attack time improved, so it's gonna lower their armor faster. Shackle Shot is now disjointable. That means if you blink, um, it doesn't necessarily latch. Or if you blink or TP, it will not hit you anymore, which I think is needed. Uh, probably should have existed before, because before you'd blink and if uh, there's a tree, you still get latched. The speed is gonna be increased though. The angle that it can latch is reduced to 23 degrees, interesting. And power shot speed no longer determines, decreases by a small amount as it goes through units. Okay, um, this is kind of how I feel that Shack Wind Ranger should have been nerfed, which is barely at all. She's barely been nerfed here. It, basically, shackle shotting is harder now, which is a good nerf. You also can't disjoint the shackle, which I think is also balanced. But because you can't disjoint it, they increase the speed, which I think is a, a good balance. And making it harder shackle, that's cool. And power shot. Decreasing as it goes through units, who gives a shit? It, it barely does anything. Very, very little is done by that. So I think this is, like, very, very small nerfs to Wind Ranger. I, like, she's obviously very annoying sometimes when she shackle ulties you, but her win rate in the pro scene was actually quite bad at the Frankfurt Major, and she's only situationally useful. I think this is completely balanced. Wind Ranger was not extremely overpowered. She was situationally useful in some people. I don't know why. I This was the one hero that everybody complained about on Reddit that I was like, why are people complaining like she's the devil? She's not the devil. She has strengths, and she has weaknesses, and over-nerfing her did not happen, and I'm very happy. I applaud Valve and Icefrog for not over-nerfing Windranger, and by that I mean uh, Icefrog plus the beta testers, because Valve does not balance the game. And by beta testers, I mean the Dota 2 balancers. Uh, Winter Wyvern temporarily removed from Captain's but Interesting. Why? I, I am very surprised about this, because... Oh, they reworked something. Okay, never mind. Cold Embrace cooldown is increased. Massively, it's a level 1 cold embrace is kind of bad. You kind of have to level it up to get the cooldown reduction. Arctic Burn slow is reduced, so worse at level 1. Winter's Curse primary and secondary units are now immune to all damage from their enemies. Okay, all damage from their enemies. So no matter what, you don't take damage in Winter's Curse now. You can still apply the slow. Um, you can still apply status defects, I believe, but they don't take damage while it's on. Uh, the secondary units now have 50 attack speed bonus. So they attack the primary faster. The AoE increased slightly, and the cooldown increased pretty big. The curse duration increased pretty massively, actually. This is huge. And it no longer lingers if the primary target died. I thought they fixed that before, but it wasn't the case. So this is kind of interesting. It changes the Winter Wyvern's ultimate in, in pretty big ways. She also got just generic nerfs to almost all of her skills, with the exception of uh, Splinter Blast. This one's pretty big. 6% slow is pretty massive. And uh, Cold Embrace nerf is needed, I think. This is fine. Um, but it basically makes a rumble pit now. It's it's going to give you a much higher chance of killing whoever you Winter's Curse. You can also, I think it's justifies the medallion purchase on Winter Wyvern a little bit more now because there's a better chance of you just kind of killing somebody due to the allies' damage. This, I think this buffs Winter's Curse, in my opinion, in the late game more, much more. But the, the real value in this is basically you cast it on a group of heroes and then you fight the rest of the battle. I think that's where the value of this ability is now. This may make her too bad, but I think there is some value, and I think removing her from Captain's Mode right now is going to be okay, because it puts the hero in a decent place. I'm okay with her being out of Captain's Mode for a while, because she's been picked constantly lately. Witch Doctor Maledict Mana Cost reduced from 120, so it's better at level 1, and Maledict Cast Range increased slightly. So very, very small buffs to Witch Doctor, basically early game buffs, and a Maledict buff. No big deal. 
And Wraith King Vampiric Aura can now be toggled to make the life steal for heroes only. I love this. Makes Wraith King a bit better in the laning stage. It's more of a more of a quality of life issue. Wraith King doesn't really need a buffer and it's situationally useful. Uh, maybe you could say he's still kind of bad, but I think this is fine. New items, Fairy Fire, combustible item, Fairy Fire. Costs 75 gold, gives you two damage, interesting, and you can consume it to restore 75 HP. Very similar as Mango in that it gives you lane sustain, except it's the opposite, right? This one, if you eat it, gives you lane sustain. But if you keep it, it gives you lane ability. That's cool. So now if you, Mango gives you HP regen, but if you hold this, it gives you damage. I would say that this item sucks right now. I think this item kind of sucks. Um, the only value this item has, in my opinion, it's 75 gold. If this item costs like 50 gold, I would say it's okay. But 75 gold is too much, I think. You're basically trading one gold for one instant. It's his instant, by the way, I assume. So it instantly heals you 75 HP. This is basically only good if you know you're about to die and it's going to keep you alive. Two damage is so bad that it's not worth getting, in my opinion. The only case, I could, you can maybe argue that a, a support that's zoning an offlane hero should buy this because feeding a kill to offlane is a huge mistake. And 75 HP is really only a big deal in the early laning stage. But you could also maybe say that if you're in a in a, in a mid matchup or something, it's okay for mid heroes, I think. It's just, it's not very good. I think it's okay for mid heroes and maybe for some supports. That's about it. In 1v1, 75 HP can completely change a game. And 2 damage is actually useful in the mid lane. I, I, but I think this item is so expensive that I just don't see a lot of people buying it. Maybe in the mid lane. That's the only place that I would see them buying this. Buy it in the mid lane, maybe sell it later, maybe eat it. But I don't like this. I don't think this item is good yet. But I think it's going to be like mangoes. It'll be too expensive at the start, and it'll get buffed a little bit later, and then people start buying it. Dragonlance, new item form from Ogre Club and Quarterstaff. Ogre Club, Quarterstaff. Okay, so that's a 1,000 gold, 10 strength, and 900 damage, attack speed, and damage. Oh yeah, there we go. Or 8, 875, I forgot they buffed it. Um, 1875 total gives you 10 strength, 10 attack speed, 10 damage. So if you're a strength here, gives you 20 damage, 10 strength, 10 attack speed. And it gives you 130 attack range, only for ranged heroes. Doesn't make a melee hero attack farther. And it does not stack. So, what heroes do you buy this on? Unless this builds into something else, I feel like this item kind of sucks. But there's got to be some hero that this is good on. Um, it's not good on Io. He's a ranged melee hero. It is not good. It's going to maybe justify it on Huskar. It'd be kind of fun to buy like four on Huskar. Increase your attack range by... Oh, it doesn't stack shit. Um, okay, if it doesn't stack... Oh, you can disassemble it. Okay, this is where the value comes. Because you can buy... it. So if you're going to buy an Ogre Club and a Quarterstaff, then it's okay. So Dragonlance is okay if you're planning to build an Orchid and a BKB. That's one example, right? Because if you're buying a BKB, you want the Ogre Club. If you're buying a Orchid, you're going to want a Quarterstaff. So you could argue that you could maybe buy it on a hero like Storm or Queen of Pain. Not that those heroes need buffs. Oh, hey, uh, that hero is... See, watch watch this. See this right here? Watch this. Oh, there's Arc Warden. It's an agility hero, apparently. Um, we'll go over this in a second, as soon as I finish this thought. Um, BKB heroes. Uh, the other thing you can use quarter staffs for, unless there's more items that are coming up shortly, um, you can use them for... used to use them for refresh orbs. What do you even use them for anymore? I don't even know, man. Item Explorer... Quarter staff. What is a quarter staff build? Why doesn't Dota2.com tell me this? I want to click on it and it tell me exactly what it builds. I feel like um, you don't use it for a refresher anymore. So is it basically just Orchid? Uh, you make Oblivion staffs. Do Oblivion staffs go into anything right now? I can't even find the Oblivion staff. Oh, there it is. Recipe, blah, blah, blah. I mean, I don't even remember. They've changed so many items recently. I'm actually surprised that I don't remember this, but I feel like Oblivion staffs actually don't make very many items. So I feel like for this item to be useful, um, there needs to be a new item put in the game that it be that it can be used with. Otherwise, it's pretty much just Orchid, to my knowledge. Because um, I don't think Quarter Staff makes anything other than an Oblivion staff. Oh, Butterfly, right? Yeah, it makes a Butterfly. Um, so any Butterfly hero that also makes a BKB could buy this item. Or any Orchid hero. I think those are the only things that I'm thinking that I can think of. 
So Butterfly Hero that buys BKB or an Ogre Club. So any Ags Butterfly Builders, any... I think this would be a good item on a Viper, actually. A really good item on Viper. Um, attack range is good. Uh, 20 damage. Oh, except he's not a Strength Hero. Never mind, it's not very good on Viper. I don't know, we'll see. I'll, we'll see if there's more items that it builds into, but at the very least, building an item like this on a hero like Queen of Pain is probably not bad. 130 attack range would put her up to, like, what is it, like, uh, like 700 attack range? That's really good. I wouldn't buy it on a hero like um, Sniper, though, if you're thinking about that. Can you guys even see me right now? It's pretty dark in here. And I'm not going to turn the light on, whatever. Um, maybe I should. I'll turn the light on one second. We got time. Next problem, I have to go to the bathroom. Aether Lens, new item formed with energy booster, ring of health, and cloak. So you can disassemble your arcane boots to make this if you want to. Energy booster, ring of health, cloak. Provides you mana, HP regen, 15 magic resistance, which is actually worse than a cloak, by the way. 200, plus 200 cast range? Whoa, that's so cool. And plus eight percent spell damage. Oh shit, we lol. Okay, so this means that you do more damage with your spells. It also helps you cast from farther away. There's so many things to think about with this. Uh, heroes, two hundred cast range. Uh, what's what's that op on? Pretty much any support. This is good. Very good on some cores. The problem is it's a pretty inexpensive item, so you're very rapidly going to run out of items. Affects target spells and distance related spells such as Venomous Gale does not affect AoE abilities like Poison Nova. Okay, that makes sense. Um, I This means you could probably increase your power shot by 200 cast range, for example, but the main heroes this is probably really good on are heroes that battle a lot and move a lot in team fights. So, Visage, probably not bad on A. I wonder if you can increase the cast range on heroes like Dazzle. That's probably not bad either, actually. Increase your range of Shallow Grave, increase your range of Heal. Um, you could, in a lot of ways, justify getting this lens with um, Dazzle and maxing out Poison Touch, for example. You can make a skill that is bad because it forces you to be close to your opponent better because you can be farther away. You could say this ability, this item is good on Lich. It's very good on Bane. Very good on Bane because you can Brain Sap, you can Nightmare, you can Fiend's Grip from super far away. I'd say this item is core on Bane, actually. This is a core Bane item right now. Um, because ranges on him are really big. Um, let's see, pretty good on Lion, pretty good on Witch Doctor, pretty good on, um, Warlock, good on Oracle, uh, very good on Rubik, very, very good on Rubik. Um, Jakiro, it's pretty good. Lina, very good. Lina's very, very good, because you can light strike away from so far now. It's probably good on Zeus. Probably very good on Zeus. 8% Sp spell damage is decent. It would amplify all this damage by a lot. Um, I wouldn't buy it on CM, I don't think, because the range on her base spells are pretty good, but it won't increase the AoE of her ultimate. So I feel like that part is a little bit weak. Um, I think it would be pretty darn good on Ben. She could throw magic missiles from farther away, but that's kind of bad because it's such a long... It's a slow projectile, so it's very easy to dodge it. Um, but those are the main heroes I think it'd be really good. I'm probably forgetting something that would be really fantastic. But a lot of those, a lot of those skills are are pretty big buff there. Um, there's maybe some other core heroes that maybe could play with it, like some melee supports perhaps. Um, you can increase your fissure range, that'd be all right. Uh, you can increase your omni heal range, which is probably not worth doing, but it's not terrible. Two hundred cast range, cast range is a lot, really. So it's basically any hero that builds arcane boots can, in some ways, justify getting this item, in my opinion, if they have some item slots. Um, I think the item would be very good on Skyrath Mage as well, actually. Really good on Skyrath Mage. Gives him a banner pool, which he needs. Uh, gives him HP regen, which is good. You don't have to buy Tranquils then. You can get something else, maybe. Um, but Tranquils is still probably right. Uh, it gives you magic resistance. Basically, gives you survivability in all aspects except for HP. It increases your cast range. So if you have a lot of single target spells, it's really good. And increases your damage by a little bit. So I would buy this on... I would go Arcanes on Skyrath. Transition into the Aether Lens with a Tranquil Boots, maybe... A little expensive for a little payoff, though. His survivability won't be enough. There's got to be some heroes that are pretty good with it, though. Maybe, like, Nyx Assassin or something. Um, it'd be okay in Nyx, I think. There's a lot of heroes that'd be kind of cool on. Iron Talon. New item form from Quelling Blade, Ring of Protection, and a Recipe. Interesting. So you take your early game items. I'm glad that there's more Ring of Protection builds, because right now it's only Tranquils and uh, Basilius, and I find myself buying a lot of Ring of Protections on some cores and just holding onto it for a long time. 
So 125 recipe gives you two armor, bonuses of the Quelling Blade, and lets you target non-player enemy units to remove 40% of the current HP. Cannot target Ancients. And has a normal 4 second cooldown when you stun trees. Uh, cooldown is 14 seconds. So what this lets you do is you can basically nuke a neutral creep for 40% of their current HP. They instantly lose 40%. Gives you two armor and it's a claim blade. So this basically, it's slightly increasing the cost of items you already have, but it, it should help you jungle very fast. Um, there are going to be heroes that buy this item at the start of the game and they start jungling with it. I think that's fair. Um, this looks like a decent Bloodseeker item, I would say. Very good Bloodseeker item. Because you can definitely jungle with a lot more heroes now because of this item. Because it instantly, if something has like 1200 HP and you reduce it by 40%, that's like you basically do 400 damage instantly, and it doesn't cost mana, it looks like. I think this is a great item for a lot of jungling heroes. Um, you'll get like a Tango and an Iron Talon, maybe. Um, but the problem is you need survivability on top of that, so you need some way to heal, so that's why I say it works very well with heroes like Bloodseeker. It's a great Bloodseeker item uh, for jungling. Uh, maybe there's some other solutions that you could... You could justify buying this early and then selling it later. If you can buy Quelling Blade, you can justify buying this item, in my opinion, because it will increase your farming speed. Just because every camp you go to, you should be able to, to reduce its HP by a lot. Um, keep in mind, though, it's probably better. It's better on melee heroes. Maybe there's not a lot of heroes that it's good on, but there's probably a couple. Be interesting to see how this works out. I like that they're introducing more early game items. Item changes. Bash damage increased from 60 to 120, and the damage bonus decreased by 15. Okay, Animal Courier. Courier purchase cooldown increased from 7 seconds to 2 minutes. Animal Courier cost decreased by 20. So this slightly makes it harder for griefers to grief, but we'll see if there's more grief penalties later on. Um, I would maybe like to see that, but most people are just upset. They just want the patch to come out, so I think this is okay. Uh, a little bit more buff to supports, 20 more gold. We'll see if that adjusts uh, item builds later. Movement speed reduced by 5 and total cost reduced by 50. See boots of speed changes. I have not seen the boots of speed changes, so let's check them out. Cost reduced by 50, the movement speed is reduced by 5. So they're slightly cheaper, which means all these boots are slightly slower. This is a buff to boots of travel, technically, and a nerf to all the other items. But because they're cheaper, this is better for supports, in my opinion. And you can also boot start easier. So if you have, like, what, 625 gold to start the game, you've got 400 right off the bat for boots. Then you have 225 for regen, which means you can't get a salve and a tango. But... Yeah, you don't have enough to get two sets of regen no matter what. But you can buy, like, a Tango and two Ironwood branches, or a Clarity Ironwood branch. Couldn't you do that before? It's 225, right? It's not, like, 250. You start with 625 gold. So you'd have 225. Tango, Ironwood. I guess before you would have to boots Iron and Clarity. So now you get an extra Clarity or an Ironwood branch. Maybe there's some build that's good for this. Cooldown reduced by two seconds. That's fine. Hex speed aura bonus now affects buildings. That's cool. I like that. Uh, not very relevant, but I think it's kind of a cool change. Bottle cost reduced by 40. Okay. Health regen per charge reduced again down to 90. Damn, this used to give you like, what, 170 HP or something like that? And then they reduce it to 110. So mana goes down, HP goes down. So basically big nerfs to bottle, but it is cheaper. A charge now heals over 2.5 seconds instead of 3 seconds. So it does heal faster, which is a buff in some ways. And added bottle to side shop starts with only one charge. Really cool change. This is beautiful. This is absolutely beautiful. Huge buff to offlaners. Helps out couriers because you don't need to like fly a bottle. Makes rune controlling more important. Uh, makes it easier to get bottles. You can't. The only thing that I want to make sure that they can't abuse is you can't buy it, use the charge, and throw it, sell it back. I am anticipating a bug fix instantly because of this. Oh, if you use the item, you cannot sell it back for full price. Oh, okay, cool. They already, they're ahead of me. Okay, cool. Um, cool, I really like this change. Helps courier, helps offlane a little bit, uh, helps supports, helps carries. Helps carries a lot, because carries oftentimes um, can now justify buying a bottle and not have to worry about it running out so far. Um, this is cool. I like this change. Butterfly flutter movement speed increased. Uh, doesn't really matter that much. Flutter duration reduced down to 4 seconds. This is actually good. I'm guessing that this increase of speed offsets the duration decrease. And that's technically good because when you use flutter, you want to get somewhere instantly. 
And you don't want to have your evasion be gone for too long. So I think this is a nice butterfly buff. Clarity mana regeneration increase from 170 over 45 seconds to 190 over 50 seconds. Same mana regen per second. So it just gives you a little bit more duration. This is so much mana. Um, clarities are very, very good now. This is amazing. You can basically completely fill your mana pool with the clarity potion, more or less. All right, they nerfed Cloak. I think this is probably necessary because Cloak was a little bit too good, in all honesty. Casual Cloak, 20%. Like, that's so OP. That was too big of a buff. Crimson Guard, chance from 75% block to 40-20. That's a uh, melee and ranged. To 100% block at 32-16. Yeah, I don't know. It's basically the same amount of block, but it always blocks. So this is good against some heroes. I don't know, man. This is... I don't know if it's still worth buying this item very often. It's it's pretty good against heroes like um, Ember Spirit and stuff, but that's about it. Critical Strike from 25% chance for 2.4 to 30% chance for 2.2. Average damage increased by 1%. Um, so the, the amount that you crit for is less high, but you crit more often, very slightly. Which is fine, I guess. Means less likely that Daedalus and Battle Fury will integrate in really obnoxious ways. Diffusal Blade, Agility bonus increased uh, by 5, and the Intelligence bonus increased by a lot at both levels. Very slight Diffusal Blade buff. Uh, it's actually pretty significant for some heroes. Drum of Endurance, base bonus movement speed increased from 10 to 13. Endurance is the active ability, not the passive. That's when you activate it. So now it gives you 13% movement speed and 25 attack speed when you activate it. That is really good. Um, we're getting to the point where replacing drum charges is actually almost worth it. I mean, that that has existed in the game for the entire duration of drum, but nobody's ever rebought a drum for drum charges. But it's getting to the point now where you can say, like, you know, if I give 13% movement speed to my whole team and 25 attack speed, you know, that might be worth spending 150 gold every time I do that. Basically, that's what you're doing. You're because it's six charges now for eight seventy five gold. So let's let's do the math on that. Oh, you can't see this unfortunately, but eight seventy five divided by six. So you're spending one forty five gold every time you use a drum charge. If that wins you a team fight, it's worth it. But it's hard to know whether or not that'll be the difference. Mana cost reduced, no big deal. Flying courier going down by twenty. So now to make a courier, it costs you three hundred instead of the previous. 340, so pretty nice for supports. Glimmer Cape base magic resistance reduced by 5. I think that's fine. I think Glimmer Cape's in an okay place right now. It's not too overpowered. So I think this is fine to nerf it again. Um, don't make it too much better than Cloak. Heart of Tresk regen goes up again, which is fine. I don't care. Uh, Helm of the Dominator. Dominate now sets the Dominated Creep's base movement speed to 350. Rather than some of the creeps being slow. So this is a buff to... I don't know if there's any creeps that are faster than 350. Um, the, obviously there's the movement speed aura one, but a lot of them are sl much slower than 350, so this buffs a lot of them in a, in a couple ways. Ghost Creep is going to be a lot better now, for example. Um, the Dark Troll Creep, I think, is slower than 350. Um, actually, a lot of the, the creeps. The, the fast ones are like 320, for example, so um, makes Helm of the Dominator better. Hooded Defiance now has an active ability. Creates a spell shield on your hero that absorbs up to 325 magic damage. Damn, they made this way better. I know somebody talked to me about this. So like, don't you think Hood is really shitty now because it's like barely better than Cloak? Well, this is a this is a way to solve that. 325 magic is amazing. This is a 2,000 gold item. This is almost OP in some ways. Um, this should be purgeable, I think. If you can purge this, then I think it's balanced. Uh, last 12 seconds, cooldown is 60. This is really good, actually. Um, there's a lot of heroes that can truly benefit from this. Um, and it basically says, you know what? Sometimes this can be worth buying Hood instead of a Glimmer Cape. Because before you're like, why would I buy Hood when I could buy Glimmer Cape. Like, yeah, Pipe is better than Glimmer Cape, but Pipe is way more expensive. So now you can say, I've got a hood with that can absorb for myself 325 magic damage. Now, I think it's still better to get a Pipe, usually, but there's going to be some cases where you can justify taking a hero and just getting a hood on him. Or getting a casual hood and having it actually be good when you finish it, rather than, like, Pipe being good once you get Pipe, but before then it kind of sucks. So this is kind of cool. I don't know if there's any heroes this would be good on. Um... Maybe like Pudge or something, it'd be pretty good. Just depends on the matchups. If you're depending on the heroes you're against, Hood might be very good. And if this stacks with Pipe, you could also get Pipe with Hoods on four other people, and all of a sudden really resist Zeus damage. Um, I think one of the other reasons that they're buffing this, despite nerfing things like Glimmer Cape base and Cloak, 
is because of the new items that are entering in the game that are increasing the magic damage by 8%. If, if you increase the magic damage done in the game, you need to allow players a way to counteract that by increasing your resistance against magic damage. And making a Hood of Defiance a genuinely good item with just the hood in your inventory, that's one good way to solve the problem. Maybe not genuinely good, but you're basically buy paying 2,000 gold for a hood that gives you like 11 HP per second, and it gives you 30% magic resistance, and it gives you 325 HP, which is basically what it does. If you're taking 325 magic and you can bump your, mat, your give, get yourself that shield on top of your head, then boom, you have 325 HP, you're resi resisting all magic damage you take for the rest of the game, and it's giving you a lot of HP regen, which over the course of a fight is a lot. Because if you're regening 10 HP per second or 11 HP per second and you survive for 10 seconds, you've all of a sudden increased your HP by another 110 HP. So buying a hood can massively increase your survivability in a Dota, in a Dota game. Massively. Really good against heroes like Huskar as well. You could justify this for, if you're like a support against Huskar, it'd be a really good way to solve that problem. Although Glimmer also does that a lot. But Hood of Defiance is going to be a little more easier to use, especially if they, have, if they have detection. Ironwood Branch can now be used by targeting the ground, planting a happy little tree that lasts 20 seconds. That's odd. That's awesome. Um, okay. This is really cool because not only does it better let you um, basically... This is so freaking cool. God, this is such a cool, cool idea. It not only lets you get rid of your ironwood branches without just dropping it on the ground, it also lets you do cool things like drop an ironwood branch to make a tree and then eat the tree. You can do that, for example. Um, you can also juke through trees and put a tree down behind you, which genuinely means that you should buy more ironwood branches as a support in the early game. You can also put a tree down to hide behind it. You can also do something like you're running away from an opponent, you put the tree down so that they don't see where you're going, and then you juke around it. So for example, if you're running away from a guy and he's chasing you but he's a little bit far away, you turn around, you put a tree down, and then you run at the tree, and then as he passes around the tree, you run the opposite way. And you could basically pass like ships in the night and he wouldn't know that you're going that way. So you could basically put a tree down anywhere and juke around it now just by having an ironwood branch. You can honestly value ironwood branches going into the late game or into the mid game at least. I am buying ironwood branches on every single support now because the amount that you can do with this is so big. And it also actually buffs up quelling a lot, which is another reason that you may want to get that new item, the iron talon, because it allows you to cut through trees. People can do this a lot more often. And we're going to see a lot of awesome cheesy shit where people basically buy ironwood branches and they show up to a lane and they just put trees around something, like a hero. You just go, oh my god, that's going to be so funny. That's actually kind of abusive. Oh, it only lasts 20 seconds, that's right. I was like, if you can put trees around somebody permanently, that would be really overpowered. But you can do that. You can basically gank somebody and put trees around them with five heroes. Maybe not all, you, you wouldn't have enough, but it should, this should maybe have a cooldown. But it's 50 gold every time you do it. I mean, it's kind of expensive, but keep in mind that if, if this keeps you alive, it's worth it. I would sacrifice an arrow branch to prevent a death, especially a first blood. So this has some value and has some outplayability. And this is a really cool change. It's just going to make the game more interesting and force people, give people a higher skill cap and have the more the higher ability to have really cool plays. Really awesome change. I love this one. Javelin Pierce improved from 20% to deal 40 damage to 25% to deal 85 bonus damage. So a massive increase in Javelin, javelin damage, but the damage is increased by 11 on average. So it basically gives you a crit ability. And apparently all chance abilities are being changed like this because this thing keeps coming up. Lincoln Sphere cooldown increased, uh, decreased by 3 seconds and the damage bonus increased by 5. So, uh, decent buff to Lincoln's. Mantle of Intelligence removed from Side Shop. I'm not quite sure why they did that to remove Null Talisman possibility or something, but I find this peculiar. Because um, before you could finish your, um, your items over there, but now you can't. I don't know. Uh, damage bonus on MKB goes down, but the mini bash proc damage increases. So something really important to think about this is that if you're playing against a hero that has BKB, then Monkey King Bar is very clearly not the best item anymore. Because the mini bash proc damage does not affect magic immune units, first of all. And second of all, they're magic immune so they don't take magic damage usually. Or they're magic resistant or whatever. I know I get those names wrong all the time. Sorry about that, Mechanics Nerds. Um, but this also makes Monkey King Bar better if you're against a hero that has really high armor and not that much HP. Or just generally has a lot of armor. If somebody has a lot of armor, magic damage is good. It does more damage. So Monkey King Bar is now better against dealing with heroes that have high armor and evasion. But so now the solution may be if you can force somebody to buy a monkey king bar, then to counter that you get a BKB or you just increase your HP a lot because the damage that the monkey king bar is doing is not as good. So monkey king bar is less good fitting into all generic item builds. Daedalus is far better as an item. So if you can force somebody to build an MKB 
and then you can somehow build into a different item instead, then you're in a good place. So this is, in some ways as well, I think this is a big buff to, I mean, not a big buff, but it's a buff to Phantom Assassin, for example, because if you get a BKB and somebody's forced to get an MKB, then their damage is increased by 66 instead of 88, which is a little bit better for you during team fights. So there's are, there are some interesting ways that this is important and something to keep in mind when you play Dota 2, especially when you're playing a carry, especially when you're playing a carry, because you have to think about how that interacts. And it gives you another way that you can deal with MKB. You can buy a hood, and you can activate this, and if you proc you twice, boom, you block his MKB damage. So, cool, interesting, inter interesting change. A little chance base, which is kind of bad, but Monkey King Bar has a really high chance at 35%, so I don't think this is that bad. Necronomicon, recipe cost reduced by 50, the archer attack range increased at the level 1. So, yeah, whatever, not a big deal. Uh, good for Beastmaster. The tiniest Beastmaster buff, basically. Observer and Sentry Wards now have an AoE indic indicator before placement. Okay. Um, I actually don't like this. At all. I actually do not like this. Um, my complaint is my skill cap. But <laughs> um, the problem is that it, what this basically means, in my opinion, is it's going to, for example, if I'm placing a ward down, it's going to show what the Observer Ward can see. So it makes it very, very clear. All right, it doesn't matter. Okay, this it doesn't matter. My skill cap doesn't matter. The only way that the only people this really helps are awful players, and players that don't understand how vision works. Like, oh, if I'm standing here, I'm gonna be able to see here, but there's a tree in the way here, so it's not gonna see there. It only helps bad players, and bad players need more help with warding because bad players are awful at warding. And hopefully, this means that we're gonna get more diverse warding from awful players. That's simple. Um, the AoE indicator is surely for the vision. The sentry is going to show what it sees, I think. And you get to decide where to place it. That way you can make better decisions and make a few less mistakes. It doesn't make that big of a difference in the pro scene. It's not like people are going to now discover... I mean, people might discover word placements that are good now because of this AoE indicator. But it's very little impact on high-level players. It technically closes the gap between bad players and myself because I know wording decently. But it's not a big deal. It's more important for new players to get into the game than it is for me to have an advantage over bad players. That's just shitty. So, my skill cap, shut up. Observe words, experience bounty increased to 100. That's actually pretty big. That's equivalent to a level 1 bounty rune, by the way. So, dewarding is... If you deward two observe words at the start of the game as a support, you can hit level 2. That's beautiful. That's actually beautiful. Octarine Core now affects the replenished time of charged abilities that was needed. Uh, Orb of Venom no longer is a uni unique attack modifier, so... You can buy this on pretty much any hero now. Uh, heroes that this could be good on. Uh, uh, Sand King, maybe. Because now you've got Caustic Finale with Orb of Venom. means you can super slow somebody. That would be cool. I think that's actually something you could really do. Um, you could also put it on a hero. Oh, I forgot to talk about uh, Oracle. Or Arc Warden. I'll do that later. Whatever. I'll finish the thing and I'll go over Arc Warden. No longer unique, unique attack modifier. Um, I don't know. There's got to be someone else that it's okay on, but it's pretty small. You could buy it on, like, Broodmother, I guess. Things like that. Anti-Mage, you could buy it on Anti-Mage now. Phase Boots no longer cancels when casting. Okay, that's probably something that should have been included a long time ago. Like, the cooldown is so low now on uh, using Phase Boots. I mean, it's a, technically a skill cap nerf um, or buff. It's bad. It's good for bad players, Bad or good for good players. No, this, this change is good for bad and good players, basically. But it's a little bit better for bad players, I think. Movement speed reduced by 5 and total cost reduced by 50. See, boots is... Oh, that's right, because they're cheaper. Um, I think this is overall fine, though. It allows you to buy phase boots on more heroes. It doesn't make you have to cast as directly. It's 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 an overall very good buff to phase boots for battle heroes, like uh, supports and stuff. Supports still can't really afford to buy phase boots in most cases. The other boots are too good. Arcanes, Treads... Or Tranquils, all three of those, but I always want to buy phase on supports, but it's just, it's I just can't see the justification. The other boots are too useful. Power Treads movement speed reduced by 5 and total cost reduced by 50. Boots speed change is nothing new there. Quelling Blade cost is reduced by 25, so that's a pretty big buffed uh, Quelling Blade. Ring Protection cost goes down. Ooh, oh, but they nerfed the armor bonus again. Okay. Um, makes me sad, but I, I think it kind of needed to happen. Ring Protection, 200 gold for 3 armor is really good. Um, two armor for 175 when it actually builds into something, that makes sense. Like, a ring of protection was buffed around this because it didn't actually turn into that much stuff, just Basilius and um, Trinkle Boots. Now it doesn't turn into anything, so it's kind of fair to have it what it's like. Uh, let me 
me see if I have a message. Uh, Rod of Atos, Cripple Cooldown increased, so it's worse. Oh! Wait. Okay. So it has a slightly longer cooldown. Cripple now grants units that attack the target that you use Cripple on 40% accuracy. And accuracy is this new mechanic that they're increasing or introducing, which I think also exists on a different hero in Dota. I may be wrong on that, but it um, you can't miss 40% of the time, guaranteed. It's very similar to the sniper headshot. So that means if I cripple a PA, you will guaranteed hit 40% of the time. But think of it this way. If she has 50% evasion, I'm going to miss half the time. But 40% of the time that I attack, I will guaranteed hit her, which means that in reality... My chance of hitting her off the bat is 40%, no matter what. Which means that technically my initial accuracy that might miss is 60%, and half of that is reduced. So that means her 50% evasion now becomes 30, I believe. That math might be right. So I'm guaranteed hitting her 40% of the time, so we should look at the other 60. And during that 60, half of the time will miss. So her fi yeah, her 50% evasion now becomes 30 so it's essentially a reduction of 40 percent into what their evasion is is really what the math is that's very clear but i should have thought about that earlier is that right 40 percent of 50 is five percent times four which is 20 yeah so any evasion is reduced by 40 percent when you use cripple on them now so rod of atos can be purchased more to counter carries that have butterflies or heroes that have radiance or heroes that have any kind of evasion so you can Justify buying a Rod of Atos against a lot of uh, melee cores because it slows and also reduces accuracy. But it's a little bit worse against generic use, but I think that's okay because this provides an interesting use that actually does scale late game because slows are pretty bad late game. Sanj Maim no longer pierces uh, spell immunity and same with Sanj Yasha. I actually like this buff. It's uh, This is the first time I've seen Sanj Yasha get nerfed in a very long time, but I think it's a nice nerf. SNY is purchased a little bit too much right now, and its effect against uh, BKB heroes is too strong, because the item is only 4,100. In a lot of ways, it's similar to a Scotty. If you proc Sanj and Yasha, it slows by like 32%. That's like a Scotty slow with a 4,100 gold item. That's really good. So it's a little bit too strong against BKB heroes, which kind of further compounds a, a team that's winning, in my opinion. Because if you buy SNY, you're usually winning. Because you get away with not having a BKB, and if another team's losing, and they're like, we have to win a team fight, they gotta buy a BKB, and all of a sudden it proxy, you and you're like, they have a Scotty. <laughs> we lost. And that kind of sucks. Satanic duration increased from 4 to 5, 4.5 seconds. Uh, very small buff. Hex cooldown decreased very slightly by 5 seconds. Um, I think that was needed because Hex is worse now because it doesn't apply break, aka remove evasion. Silver Edge debuff is no longer dispelled, but that means if you hit somebody and they pop BKB, it can't go away now, and you can't um, remove it with your um, diffusal blade but i think that also means that you still can't apply it on bkb heroes it just means that if you hit somebody that doesn't have their bkb on it's going to stay which i think is super balanced because that's basically allowing the person that's outplaying their opponent to outplay them before it would be like oh you hit me with silver edge bkb now we're now we're good so it makes silver edge a little bit more viable for people that play correctly and punishes people that play badly which is what you should always have in dota uh, Skull Basher strength bonus increased from 8 to 10. The bash damage increased from 60 to 120, but it barely increases your damage. So Skull Basher's use is all about bashing now. Um, it does not increase your damage much. It's literally all about bashing, but if you do bash, it does a lot of damage. I think this is magical. Smoke and Deceit cost reduced by 50, so that's cool. You can pretty much always go, you should always be able to go to lane with a smoke now uh, as a support because Courier costs 20 less. Um, so if you're spending 20 less on a smoke, that means you're, you only need to find 30 extra gold now to justify a smoke of deceit. Also, Ring of Protection is now cheaper at 175, so you can definitely get away with, probably you can probably get away with buying a Ring of Protection. Like, just by buying Ring of Protection and a Courier now, you're saving a total of 45 gold. So that alone means you can maybe get away with doing like Ring of Protection, Courier, and then the other guy buys Ops Hordes or something. So you can probably have one support that gets Ring of Protection now, I think. We will see um, early item builds change. Tangos. Boosted Tangos now last for double the duration instead of providing double the healing rate. I think that's fine. Using Tango on Iron Branch Trees provides double healing duration. Okay. Alright. This is cool. This is an interesting way of changing that whole Tango juke thing. Because if I'm running away and I put a tree down and my opponents are chasing and they're playing correctly, they can eat that tree instantly. Because that's that's the counter to it, right? It's either Quilling Blade or Tango or uh, an ability that breaks trees. 
So if you're running away and you block it, your opponent can profit from that, which I think is fair because blocking a, a juke spot is a little too overpowered. If you eat the right tree now, you are getting double the healing duration. But it's duration, it's not double rate, which is more balanced. Double rate is too strong in the early game because burst healing is better than overtime healing. And this also means that if you're in a lot of shit, you can drop a tree down and eat it right away. You'll lose an ironwood branch, but you will get a total of 230 HP instead of 115 which is okay because an ironwood branch increases your HP by 19. So by eating your ironwood branch, you're actually increasing your HP, your double value in your tango. So it's something you can do if you need to. It gives you more situations that you can use to win Dota. Awesome. And is a nice nerf to the, be a, a, the ability to block a juke spot and run away. Very cool. Um, Trinkle Boots. Also very important that you have six item hotkeys now. If you guys don't have those, get on it. It's very important because ironwood branches are now another item that you can click. Tranquil Boots, armor reduced from 4 to 3. I actually think this is balanced. Um, too often I will buy Tranquil Boots on a support just because I want to be more survivable against physical carries. It's just too good. Reducing the armor by 1 I think is very needed. It's a buff to carries. Um, and I think that probably needed to happen. Tranquil Boots plus a survivability item just makes your supports too invulnerable against somebody that has a shitload of gold. In a lot of cases. So, And of course it got its movement speed reduced by 5 because they all got nerfed. Okay, Or made cheaper. Technically a buff in a way. Vanguard chance from 75% to 100%. So they basically changed Vanguard and Crimson Guard to 100% block, which I actually kind of like. Um, I think this is a lot better in a lot of ways. Because Poor Man's Shield already is 100% block. Shouldn't the other things do that? Uh, Veil of Discord now requires two times Robe of the Magi instead of a 900 recipe. So now it costs you a Helm of Iron Will, it costs you a um, Mill Talisman, and it costs you two Robes of the Magi. So you could have three Int items in the early game. Such as no talisman, uh, robe robe, and then build the the helm of iron will and instantly have a veil of discord. That's very cool. It makes easier build up basically. Uh, I think this item's a little under purchased right now. It's about what 2,600, 2,300 gold I believe, which is not that much, and it increases the team the damage of your team by quite a bit. I feel like more teams should throw one on a support just casually, but the problem is most of the time you don't catch five heroes with it. You'll just initiate on two and then play the team fight. Whereas if they're five together, yeah, Veil is amazing, but if it doesn't catch five, it's a little bit iffy. Vid booster added to side shop. Uh, this means you can now build a full Vanguard in the side shop, which is a big buff to heroes like Spectre. Um, Vid booster is commonly purchased by a lot of heroes anyways in the safe lane. Um, I think that's cool. Ultimate orbs removed from the side shop. Uh, I don't understand this one. This one's a bit weird. Guess you could. Uh, I don't. I don't know why they did it. Yasha movement speed bonus is reduced by two percent as well. Um, Sanj, Sanjin Yasha and Manta are unchanged. I actually think this is needed because Yasha was a little bit too good by itself. A lot of people would buy Yasha just for the Yasha because they wanted the movement speed, and then they're like, "Well, there's no reason to make a Manta because Yasha and Manta have the same movement speed. So why would I ever upgrade to a Manta if I can't use my illusions?" Similar to why a Tiny does it. This is actually a Tiny nerf right here, in my opinion. Um, I think this is kind of a needed nerf. And it also really justifies getting an SNY now. Because if you go from a Yasha, which is 8%, to a Sanjin Yasha, you're doubling your movement speed bonus just for the price of a Sanj. So in some ways, it's a buff to SNY. Eh, not that much. It's mostly a nerf to heroes that only buy a Yasha or sit on a Yasha early. So to limit agility carries a little bit in their early farm. But once they make an SNY, it doesn't matter. And that's pretty much the patch. I guess not. Um, we'll go over... I'm going to do Arc Warden, and then I'm going to read the additional changes. Okay, so we already talked about Arc Warden's basic abilities. His stat gains are not bad. He's an agility hero. His agility is his worst stat. His int is decent, and his strength is pretty not not amazing. His armor is awful. His movement seed is bad. His uh, base damage is pretty low at uh, 40 to uh, 50 damage. Uh, so I guess it's 45. That's not bad. It's not bad. Oh, uh, 40, wait, did I say 40 to 50? Oh, it is 40 to 50. So you do 45. That's okay. Blah, 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 don't care, don't care, don't care. Okay, so Flux. This is the one where you cast on a hero that... If he's by himself, he takes the damage. If he's not by himself, he doesn't take the damage. 20 second cooldown, 75 mana cost. Does 60 damage per second, up to 360 damage for 6 seconds. And does a 50% movement speed slow. So very, very good slow if they're by themselves. Um, very long cooldown though, 20, at 20 seconds. But I think all of his cooldowns are long because you can spawn a second version of himself and double them up. I think that's why. Uh, Magne magnetic Field. This is the one that um, grants evasion and attack speed bonus to allies. So evasion of 100%. They're basically 
impossible to hit. There's another reason probably why they put Atos in. And their attack speed bonus is 80. So this is actually really good to combo with uh, Legion Commander, for example. If you're dueling somebody, you put this down, Legion Commander can't get hit, but he attacks faster. It's kind of cool. Lasts for five, up to 5 seconds. 50 second cooldown. That is a massive cooldown. But it's a 3.5 second duration, and if you're in the early game and you're trading hits with somebody, that's actually pretty nice to have. Mana cost is a little high. And here we go, 4 second cooldown. This is really, apparently all you're going to do in the early game is cast Spark Wraith. Keep in mind, this ability here is full slow at level 1, and by you get by the time you get to the 4th point, you're basically just increasing the damage. This is the one where you put it on the ground, materializes and patrols the target area until an enemy comes in the range. Once the target's been found, the Wraith fuses with them dealing damage. That includes creeps and heroes. So you can basically probably create a lot of traps with this, but it's a 4 second cooldown. 130 mana is a lot, so you're going to be casting this a lot, but considering you don't cast a whole lot of other stuff, it's probably fine. Uh, the search rate is 375, the activation delay is 3 seconds, so as you cast it, it takes 3 seconds to go up, and the rate speed is 400, which is a little bit faster than a normal moving hero, so you can definitely see it coming and run away. And the duration lasts for 50, so that means you can have a maximum of like uh, 12 spark rates up, which would do a maximum of like... This is the new techies, basically. Alright, and Tempest Double is 65 cooldown, down to 55, the duration is 20 seconds, the health cost, it costs you 30% of your max health, or current health? I don't know. Uh, I'm guessing current health, max health, I don't know, probably current health. You lose a lot of your mana and a lot of your health, but then you can double things. So basically what you use this for is, you can have up to 10 seconds where you are 100% evasive, and you have a shitload of attack speed. I assume that if you cast two, it doesn't stack. Um, you can have up to, like, 20... Well, that's not true. During this, you can cast, like, five more Spark Wraiths. And these do full damage, by the way. And you can cast, uh, what, two Fluxes? Basically a second Flux. So let me try to think how this... I think this hero is a support, I believe. Feels like a support to me. Definitely feels like a support, because during team fights, what you would basically do is, oh, man, we're getting some stuff. You cast a Magnetic Field. You put some Spark Wraiths down... And you maybe flux a hero that's by himself, but it's unlikely in a team fight. And then what you do is you cast Tempest, and then you put down a second Magnetic Field, and more Spark Wraiths, and you spam Spark Wraiths until the second Tempest dies, and you put another Flux down. But it also comes down to items, right? So if you're playing a support, maybe one cool item, you could get something like... Four Staffs. You could Four Staff yourself, make a double, and Four Staff yourself again. Or you could Four Staff, Blink... Make a double, force staff yourself. But it really comes down to things like Dagon and stuff. You can also double a Necro 3. Necro 3 is really good with this hero, apparently. I've honestly never played against this hero, played this hero in Dota 1. So I it was this hero came out in Dota 1 long after Dota 2 came out, so I didn't go back to play it. But uh, I think the hero is gonna be interesting. We'll see how he's balanced. Um I think his stacking is pretty bad, so you can kind of carry on him, I guess, because at late game you're not losing any HP to make a copy. And it's going to have... The problem is that your abilities are really bad for carry potential, with the exception of this one, but its cooldown is so long, and it has an AoE, so people can just run out of it. Um, I don't remember... Are you a ranged hero? Yeah, you are a ranged hero. So, hypothetically, you could buy carry items on this hero and make double the value of your carry items. Um, I think Midas is also very popular on this hero, because every 65 seconds, or basically every time your Midas is off cooldown, you can double your hero, and you can Midas. So I think Midas is very common. You basically need to get Midas and you get a lot of hero, uh, get a lot of items. And the same goes for maybe playing a support. The support kind of works. I don't know if I like the support. It's a weird hero. I, I'm not quite sure how it's going to work out, but I think it'll be most likely either a support. I just don't see it being played as a carry. I think it, it's going to be like a cheesy carry, in my opinion. I just don't see it being anything but a cheesy carry. Again, the stat gain is okay, but not amazing. The movement speed is pretty average. But, I mean, if you get, like, 6 slotted, yes, yeah, it's, it's going to be really cool. But you just don't have very many good carry abilities. It's basically just Magnetic Field and the ability to attack twice. You have a slow that only works if there's no one else around. And you have just a simple nuke. It just does damage. That's it. So you're not going to be able to snowball your hero into an advantage unless you get an item that lets you do that. And you're not going to be able to do that very well. So I really feel like a support is going to be the only way that this hero works well. In the early laning stage, if you're in a trial lane, you could just punish the crap out of this hero. Although mag magnetic field is pretty good, because you could all stand in the magnetic field and then um, have evasiveness for 
a very long time. It's basically a wind run for your whole team plus attack speed. So I think this skill is really good. Um, I think this skill is... I really don't know. I feel like the cooldown is so long. And I feel like this skill is potentially cool. I don't, I don't even know if it's invisible. You might have to just put him on cliffs and stuff. Oh, we'll see. Um, that is, uh, that's Arc Warden. I'll definitely play him for you guys and I'll test him out. Alright, additional changes to finish this out. Um, updated the dashboard top bar. Army has been moved from within the Heroes tab to its own top level bond, which needed to happen. And now has a new items panel preview, preview panel when hovered. Good. Custom games can now be found inside of the Arcade tab. Okay, there's now a top level store tab, which includes featured items, stuff to sell, blah, blah, blah. Updated ARDM game mode to fix various client crashes. Cool. When selling items in the ARDM, you now get 85% of the purchase price. Interesting. I don't know if I like that, but it does allow you to... Because before, if you buy an ARDM, like an eggs or something, and here you get doesn't have eggs, then your eggs is kind of bad because it only gives you HP. So now you can justify selling things, and then... What's 85% of 4,000? We'll see how much you lose on an average item. 4,000 gold, we'll say, times 0.85. I mean, you're losing 600 gold. So if you sell an eggs, you lose 600 gold, which is not bad because if you... I think this can make ADR, ARDM a lot more playable, personally. And uh, potentially played viably, like uh, you could do a tournament with it maybe and it'd be more fun to watch rather than just very straightforward. You can also see your hero and skill up as soon as your current hero dies. That's good because that way you can actually like make those decisions while you're waiting to die. That's cool. Fixes in the Steam client released on that. Uh, frame rate hitches. Oh, that's weird. Subscribe to a large number of hero guides. Very, very peculiar. Victim, uh, tell you if you're in a match, the Steam should not patch the game. Steam never downloads, updates the game, or custom installs are making blah blah blah. Yeah, too many words. Add an option for specifying whether you always want to hear the default respawn music or. Um... Okay, good. You can un unlimited pause in custom games now. That was one thing that needed to happen. Uh, added a new targeting UI for unit AoE abilities. We'll see what that means. It might mean that you actually get to choose what you click on, but it'll also show the AoE. Chatting Lamau now causes your hero to laugh. In the past, if you type LOL, it would also do that. So there are a bunch of memers over there. Funny healing now shows a buff icon, okay? I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means. Okay, they appeared the prismatic gems in the armory. Okay. Looks like they're fixing a lot of particles. Arcana looked incorrect to an in game. Okay. There's a lot of things being fixed here. I think that a lot of people have been complaining about. Okay. Improved pathfinding. Okay. Fix the bug where the, there's probably going to be bugs, unfortunately, whenever you do that. But fix the bug where the friends menu sometimes clipped elements off the end. Don't know what that means. Okay. Fix dire tower destruction portals. There's a lot of bugs here. Fixed a bug where heroes would sometimes be missing facial movement. Uh, okay. Okay. Character picker can now preview and create alternate model sets. I don't know what this means. Oh, I, it's for making movies. So this is all stuff that I shouldn't care about. All right, and that's it. That's the whole patch. Uh, that took me about... Started about three. That took me about two hours and 15 minutes. Um, I should be able to catch the next Canada Cup game. Um, you guys can tune in for that. Uh, thanks, everybody, for watching. I appreciate it. This is my first impressions of 6.86. Should be a good one. Um, can't wait to see the map. Uh, obviously, I can't show you that until someone goes to the goes to the test client, but we will undoubtedly learn it soon and tr test out all the new heroes. I would say this is a moderately big patch. I'm definitely gonna forget about the Zeus Arcana. I'm definitely gonna buy that. No, maybe I should read this. I'm gonna read this off stream um, or off off of the recording. I don't think I want to read it here. Um, but a lot, quite a few changes. A lot of little balance tweaks. Nothing too significant, and everything that is significant, they got removed from captain's mode. So. Maybe something to abuse in pubs only. Okay, thanks for watching, guys. I'm glad that you could hear me this whole time. You can still hear me, thank God. And I will upload this immediately. See you guys soon. Bye.